Thank you very much, Councilwoman. Roll call, please. Councilman DeCicio. Here. Councilwoman Gallego. Here. Councilman Nowakowski. Councilwoman Pastor. Councilwoman Stark. Here. Councilman Valenzuela. Councilman Waring. Here. Mayor Williams. Here. Uh, do we have cards? We do. This is public comment time. Pat Bent, would you like to come down? Or I guess you have a microphone. Two minutes, please. Well, we'll see if this thing works. Hello. I can hear you. Can they set it up? Can somebody turn this on? It's on. on. Okay. Today is a whole new day in the world because I got a promise from Thelda that we're going to have a meeting in about two weeks when she gets settled in from all the problems that was handed over to her. I think that's what you said. I don't think I quite phrased it that way. Okay. So anyway, um, and then of all things, I got a call from Councilman Valenzuela's head person. I think he said something about Phillips. But he wanted me to explain what my problems were, or our problems were. Oh, there he is. So thank you, young man. Anyway, if he wants to be mayor, we're going to have to get together and decide that the city operates, should operate like a business. Because there was a time when the city put up a sign that we, the citizens, it actually said, you are our customer. That would be fine if somebody listened, but how would you like to be a customer of a company that will not talk to you, takes advantage of you every time you turn around, and you don't have a, an option? We can't go to Glendale or Mesa or Chandler or Tucson and complain because this is our city up here. They say, how are we going to help you? Well, they don't help us up there, so we thought maybe you'd help us. But I want to thank, it's pretty hard to do, but after 25, 30, 40, 50 years of bitching, I've got to, I keep being told, I've got to use a positive mental attitude. I thought I did that lots of times. I haven't always been this bad, so I'm trying to change today. Thank you. <laughs> so are you going to let us, or we are going to have a meeting in a couple of weeks, Elda? Yes, we are. And Valenzuela, was your um, chief of staff named Phillips or something? He asked me to explain perfectly what our problems was, and he said, but I'm not your council. You are not our council person. That is so false. Every one of you up there has an equal vote that makes you all responsible. No matter what the city attorney says, a few months ago when we were here, he said, you know, but we were really giving them hell that day. And they said, you people up there, the mayor, the council, the city manager, you're not accountable or responsible. But these citizens here are, that is so damn sick. But I thought I was going to be nice today, so the red light's on. Just thank you, and let's do what you say you're going to do. Thank you. Thank you. John Resnick. My name's John Resnick. Valenzuela's right-hand man came to Pat, and he told him today, the city works different than what other departments work. I thought the uh, ordinances are written on how you're supposed to uh, do things within the city. Not to change the ordinance, but you're supposed to do what's written up for you to do. Not work something out with somebody and somebody not. So I'm just wondering why our problems can't be corrected. Because you're, you're changing your uh, ways of doing things. 
You don't care anybody about the employee, uh, the workers out there. You don't care about the citizens. It's time now that we should do something and get it taken care of. Thank you. John. John Severed. And then Bert. Mayor, members of council. Clearly, uh, we've got a lot of important issues uh, that a lot of people care about today. Um, I have a feeling this one might be another late night. But uh, in my opinion, there, there may be not uh, a more clear and present danger to our Constitution, which you all swore when you took your office uh, to uphold and protect, than children being torn away from their families and locked in cages. Um, you know, it, it's, it's really one of those things where um, historically over the years, uh, the council has said it's not our policy to comment on things that are outside of, you know, council's um, vicinity of control. Um, I would just say, going forward, um, there will be a new mayor, uh, there's an upcoming election, and I think the community expects going forward that that new mayor take into account things that happen. And the least that we can do when uh, the, the governor of our state sends Border Patrol to assist with these things that have a very direct impact um, and again, threaten our constitution to speak out, the, that's the least you could do. The only thing I've heard from the council lately has been infighting and squabbling um, and absolute silence on issues that really matter. Thank you. Thank you. Brent? Good afternoon and thank you for the time to talk. Um, Ms. Mayor, it's a pleasure to have you up there. So or interim mayor, however the title goes. But my, my concern is I was listening to yesterday's meeting and Councilman DeCicio brought up a request and also sent and published a letter demanding that on the July 5th agenda, the city manager's position be discussed and potentially voted on. And I've got a definite concern with that happening in the next short period of time. We are down one council member already due to the mayor leaving. We will potentially have two other council members leaving sometime in the very near future to go run for mayor. So we would potentially have two appointed council members and an even number of people, total eight, making this decision for a new city manager if for some reason the council decided you wanted to go that way. I think it's in the best interest of the city, the residents of the city who vote for their council members to be allowed to elect the council that makes a decision like that. That shouldn't be a decision made by appointed council members, council members leaving to run for office, an even number. It's right now too political, too damaging to make that decision in the next two weeks. You guys go on break after the July 5th meeting, I believe. You're, you're gone. You're taking your time off from having meetings here. Let's, let's look at this come August, come November, after the election, something. But I think it's too important because the way this city operates, unless you want to change and have a mayor-controlled city, a strong mayor city, you cannot pick a new, should not pick a new city manager under the guise of a third of the council being either appointed or vacant. So I, I plead to Sal, who I hope is still on the phone as he's driving in or wherever he's going, and the rest of the council to look at this at a later date and not try and rush something out of frustration from the light rail discussions that are gonna be happening later today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Diane Barker. Good afternoon, Mayor Williams and City Council Diane Barker, and I'm District 7. And I used to say, what do we do on Mondays? 
Now I say, what do we do anytime? We go downtown Phoenix. Our program has um, been uh, derailed by the city, but they've put in other summer activities from the Parks Department, and you can check that out online. Uh, there are activities, uh, kickboxing inside across from the uh, YMCA. And um, i just like to say, when we build transit, we need, we use outside consultants a lot, but we need to have our consultants either here or there, people that actually use transit. I was told when we got the water system for the platforms at light rail that it was innovative and that it would come up cool because we didn't always get that before that time. It takes a little while, typically most of them work, and it does, but the problem is, is the, obviously the contractor doesn't know Arizona because when you put your hand on to get the water, it burns your hand, and they did not put covers on it. I'm looking at the proposed budget for, that you all are passing for the city, and when it comes to, and all of this is the public's money. We own the whole house, we own the federal money, your local money, and like this. It's 117 million that the federal transit gives. The city is blessed to be the grant recipient, not only for the city, but the whole region. And that's for operations and maintenance and capital. We need to have the city and the staff oversee these contracts so the people know really the way that, that they operate for the user. So we want those people that are earning a salary to get out and use transit. And you also have on the city budget 313 million of transit 250 monies. Those go for maintenance. If it doesn't work and you can't maintain it, don't build it. Thank you. I believe we go to the 24 hour paragraph. Could you read that please? The titles of the following ordinance and resolution numbers on the agenda were available to the public at least 24 hours prior to this council meeting and therefore may be read by title or agenda item only. Ordinances numbered S44586, 44616, and S44745 through 44823. Resolutions number 21650 and 21651. Thank you. Uh, next is the minutes of March 21st. Councilwoman Gallego, do you have a motion? Move approval. We have, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Um, Vice Mayor, do you have a motion? Mayor, I make a motion to suspend the rules and take item 159 out of order. Second. Okay. Roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Uh, do we have a motion to approve mayor's boards and commission nominations? Motion to approve uh, boards and commission nominations. Second. All in favor, please Aye. say Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Motion to approve the council. <laughs> do you want to do it, mayor? It's all right. It's all <laughs> well, that do. used to be my job. <laughs> uh, motion to approve items uh, 3 to 31. We, oh, uh, you got the swearing in, so I'm sorry. Motion to approve city council board. I, I move we approve city council board and commission nominations. Second. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, I believe we have a couple here to swear in. Okay, I'm going to say I, and then you have to fill in your name. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the laws of the state of Arizona, 
that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of the office of according to the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations, you are now official. If you would go up behind so everyone can... Uh Ready, Mayor? Ready to go to items 3 through 31. All right, the liquor license application moved to approve items 3 through 31, and there are no cards. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Uh, City Clerk, are we ready for ordinances, resolutions, new business, and planning and zoning? All right, motion to approve items 30 through, through 160, except the following. Items 32, 34, 37, 42, 43, 44, 63 through 70, 75, 93, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 104, 106, 115, 120, 154, 156, 157, 158, and 160. Item 139 is requested to be withdrawn. Item 155 is requested to be continued to September 5th, uh, 2018. And items 75, 103, and 104 are as corrected. Um, and that's it. Okay. Do we have a second? Okay, we have a second. Hey, Roll call, please. DeCicio. Yeah. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Oh, yeah. Ready for the next motion, Mayor? Yes. Mayor, I make a motion to suspend the rules and take items 157 and 158 out of order. Do I have a second? Second. And we have a second. Um, is that roll call? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Uh, go to item 157. Um, Mayor, yes, I'd like to make a motion to approve the voluntary property acquisition of 3121 East Washington at a price not to exceed the property's appraised value of 3,600,000. Oh, I'm sorry. You can see how excited. You want? It? I will move to some consideration. I'm sorry. Second. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. No. Thank you. Oh, oh it's Second. seven to one. Thank you, Mary. Clearly, I'm still waking up from yesterday's meeting. So, <laughs> sorry about that, folks. I'd like to make a motion to approve the voluntary property acquisition of 3121 East Washington at a price not to exceed the property's appraised value of $3,620,000 with the additional stipulation that for any parcels newly acquired by the City of Phoenix Aviation Department, and the Avi Aviation Department will continue to pay any property tax that would, would be normally due to the elementary school district if the city of Phoenix owns greater than 50% of the land mass for aviation uses within that school district boundary. 
The property tax for the school district is to be identified by the Maricopa County Assessor's Office and paid to the school district on an annual basis for a period not to exceed five years and to the extent permitted by federal law. Further, I would ask that a strategic marketing plan be developed over the summer to identify properties that can be leased. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Do we need roll call? Uh, Mayor, may I make a, a brief comment? Yes, you may. Wonderful. I want to thank the Aviation Department for working with us on this item. The airport is the big landowner in the school district, and we're going to be partnering with them to make sure that if we take land off the property tax, the Wilson Elementary School District doesn't have as much impact. So thank you to the Aviation Department for looking at this and also responding to information we've received from the business community and neighbors about the need to take full advantage of the property, activate it, and make sure that when the city owns property, it's being used to its full extent and that we're being a good neighbor. So I think this is a win for the community and look forward to supporting the item. Thank you. Mayor, I have a comment. Councilman? Can I have staff up here I need to ask questions? question is that I'm very concerned that we're paying twice as much for the property that the individual actually bought the property for back in 2012. Um, did the individual approach the city or did the city approach the individual for the property? Uh, Mayor to uh, Councilman Nowakowski, the property owner approached the city uh, I believe back in August of uh, 2017 and inquired as to whether or not we would be interested in voluntarily acquiring his property. And the other question would be, um, are, we, are we helping this, um, this business relocate within the city of Phoenix? Mayor Councilman Nowakowski, the business is actually um, working on a consolidation. They won't be opening up in that particular facility in the near future. They're working towards more contract manufacturing and looking at different options they have. I had my team go out and visit directly with the company to see what their plans were. And it was to not open a new facility at this time in any city. All righty. And then the other thing is um, the surrounding properties for example, the, um, the ballet and all them, they actually purchased property just a block away from there for less than what we're paying for it. Why are we paying twice as much for that piece of property? Mayor, Councilman Nowakowski, mm -hmm. uh, the appraisal is specific to the property that was appraised and comparables similar to that property are used in the appraisal. So without having uh, the specific comparable in front of me to analyze it and look at the details of that cell, I'm unable to answer that question. But in reviewing the appraisal and all the comparables that were provided to me in addition to my own research, I have no reason. It appears that the appraisal is reasonable. And is there a plan for that property or the use of the, um, the property that the airport needed to use that property for? Uh, Mayor, to uh, Councilman Nowakowski, uh, assuming the council approves the, uh, the transaction that uh, is being considered at this point, then uh, after closing and the uh, aviation department gains occupancy, then uh, we are already working on a plan with community and economic development to try to find a tenant for that facility and put it back in revenue use uh, for the airport. My concern is that we're purchasing property with no idea of what the future use is going to be. We have all these uh, rental facilities that no longer exist. We have tons of property. We dislocated four Hispanic communities around the airport. And if we're going to purchase property, we should have a plan for it. We should have a master plan of the use of the airport property. And um, it just, it's hard for me to approve purchasing a piece of property that somebody that we're paying twice as much as that individual paid for in 2012 
without no master plan of what we're going to be doing in the future. I like staff to really look into the future and using uh, the economic development director's lead to really start looking at proper uses of property around the airport that we no longer are using and we've been sitting on for 33 years. Thank you. Uh, Jim, could you explain the process on why we are obligated to go with the appraised value? Uh, Mayor, if, if I may, uh, I would ask uh, Joellen McBride, our uh, legal counsel at aviation, to kind of walk you through why we're, some, we're bound by the fair market value for the property. Thank you. Chair, uh, Mayor, and Council Members, our federal regulations that we have to comply with at the airport as a federally funded airport um, requires us to conduct an appraisal to determine the fair market value for that property. Once we have determined the fair market value, then our regulations require us to provide an offer to the owner of just compensation. And just compensation equals the fair market value as determined in the appraisal document. Uh, and the federal regulations are very clear that we have to comply with those regulations um, in order to purchase the property, whether it's a voluntary transaction, a grant-funded transaction, or a condemnation. Thank you. Do I have a motion? I have, oh, sorry. Okay. You made the motion? Yeah. Oh, okay. Excited I missed it. Uh, Councilwoman? I just have a question for staff. Uh, last week, we voted on this item, and it ended up dying, and it's now being reconsidered. I guess my question to you is last week, now that we're uh, reconsidering it, and there's language regarding that the city uh, will uh, provide uh, revenue or provide uh, the tax base to the school. Why didn't we do this last week? Why is it? Why? Why wasn't that the motion last week? And we're now having to reconsider it. Mayor, members of the council, when staff went back, there was a concern that there was an impact to the school district. And looking at that and. Ms. Mackey can speak specifically to the impact. There is a uniqueness with this particular school district and the amount of tax base that they receive from the airport, which is different than other school districts. So to your point, we maybe should have considered that last week when we brought the item forward. The reason why I'm asking is because this was the issue last week. And so uh, at least when I was briefed, uh, I was told or when I many people told me that this item may die uh, due to the fact for concerns of uh, the school, which the school, Wilson School District, happens to land or is located really around an industrial area. And uh, what is happening in that area is that the homes that are there are being bought up and are, are our families are leaving in that area. And so uh, there is a process. It's very similar to Murphy School District, where they're located in an industrial area. Um, and so I'm just asking these questions because people are going to ask, why didn't you do this last week? And why are you doing it now? And uh, there are people on the council now changing their vote. So I'm just making it clear. Mayor, I, yeah. I, I made my you. point on the business itself, but the tax scheme itself is a really bad idea. If you want to save the tax, if you want to save the school district, you just don't acquire the property, and it still stays there and the school district's protected. This is a bad scheme and a bad precedent to have taxpayer money going to pay a school district for a purchase. It's bizarre at best, um, and that's all I've got to say, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Roll call. DeCicio. No. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. I'm a no, but I want to explain my situation is that I believe before we spend a penny or millions of dollars that we need to have a use for that facility or that property. Pastor. Yes. 
Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. No. Mayor Williams. Yes. I three. Passes by three. Next item on the floor is item thirty two. Move approval of item thirty two. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, did you want to make a comment? Okay. DeCicio. Yeah. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yeah. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. No. Mayor Williams. Yes. Brings us ID 34. Do I have a motion? I Move. Have approval. Second. Anyone want, want to make a comment? He just wants to vote. Uh, Our bioscience industry is growing very quickly and has been one of the great investments in diversifying our economy. This item is a healthcare economic impact study that will help us tell the story of the work we are doing. So I really appreciate ASU being our great partners in this and look forward to supporting it. Thank you. Roll call. DeCicio. No. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. No. Mayor Williams. Yes. Uh, Councilman DeCicio, you asked for 37, 42, and 44. Uh, would you like to make a comment, or can we group them together? Uh, you can group them together, Mayor. I did 37, 42, 43, and 44, I believe. Okay. We didn't have your name on 40. Uh, oh. I, I pulled 43, but I'm voting for the other ones. Okay. We need to hold out 43. Yeah. Move approval of items go. 37 and 42. And 44. And 44. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Roll call. DeCicio. No. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Seven to one. Uh, item 43, do I have a motion? Move approval. Okay. And a, second. And a second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. And did you want to make comments? Okay. DeCicio. No. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. No. Mayor Williams. Yes. Six to two. Okay, that takes us to item 63, and I believe uh, item 63 is a public hearing on the adoption of the final 2018-2019 budget and on the truth in taxation and proposed property tax levy scheduled for council action on July 5th, 2018. I now declare the hearing open. Are there any cards? No cards. Anyone in the audience? Seeing none. Uh, public hearing is closed. Item 64 is convening of a special meeting of the City Council to consider adoption of the 2018-2019 budget. Mayor, in accordance with state statute, I move that the regular meeting of the City Council be recessed and the City Council convene a special meeting to consider adoption of the budget. Yep. And we have a second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing no request. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries eight to zero. Item 65 is the adoption of the final 2018-2019 annual operating funds budget. Mayor, I like to move that item 65 being ordinance S44749, the final 2018-2019 annual operating funds budget be adopted. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, we have a second. Uh, clerk, will you call the roll, please? DeCicio. Uh Mayor, oh. may I just explain sorry. it really quick? I'm going to be voting no. Charlie. I believe that this oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, the, uh, again, I think it's very clear right now we have a structural budget deficit at the City of Phoenix. Uh, management has created this. They've done nothing to fix it. The $2 billion that was added in debt is just unconscionable. 
Uh, we have a fiscal problem that every city is, if you look at what the city of Phoenix, it has the highest revenue ever in its history, and still every year it has to go through a budget scheme or a budget problem every single year. And this is just insanity. city of Phoenix is the largest city in the state of Arizona and should be better managed, and it is not managed correctly. We would not be facing this problem today if it wasn't for Ed Zerker and others at the city council level or at the, uh, the management level that would recognize this and put a plan in place to fix it. Adding debt is not a plan. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, if, if I could hold the vote, because I just was handed two cards that wish to speak. Uh, one is in the overflow. Very turn ander. Oh, you're here. Okay. Yes. Bidi Diana, but Bidi is fine. Hernandez. Um, I just wanted to comment on the process again, right? You're going to approve a budget that uh, completely ignored over 600 people participating, sending you emails, sending you cards. You all said, call us, email us, talk to us, show up to the meetings, and people did. And all of those, all of that input was ignored. And so I want to highlight that again, you are moving with this budget, and you have flown it by, ignoring community's input the whole way. And um, I also want to point out that I think that a lot of people that I know are here as well on the light rail is the exact same reason, that you continue to move on processes without engaging community, without talking to people, without actually getting the input for people who live here, right, and, and making decisions regardless of their input. And so I want to highlight that those are really critical. And I also want to highlight the fact that as of today, there have now been 27 officer-involved shootings, more than no. the last few years, yes. And as of today, there are 15 people that have been killed. And the fact that the comments that people, um, by officers, right, and involved shootings, and the fact that all of these comments are being ignored in your budget is not reflective of the priorities of the community, is not reflective of the crisis that the city is in, and it's not reflective of what people want, and it's actually moving with a lack of leadership, a lack of courage to, uh, do something about what's happening today. People are being shot, people are being killed. The police department is, has mentioned that this is alarming, has said that this is an issue and ha is requesting money for, um, for an investigation that needs to be done, but at the same time, 600 people asked for this budget to include a trauma compensation fund, and you all ignored it. And so I just want to highlight the fact that people are continuously be here, and this is not the first issue, where you are moving in decisions without community input, and that's going to be continue to be a problem. Thank you. Thank you, Wesley Harris. My name is Wes Harris, Ms. Madam Mayor, members of the council. I'm using this item to try to get a point across. Yesterday, after my brief remarks on the uh, Central Avenue debacle, I went to uh, Councilman Waring's uh, town hall, I guess, with with Bill Gates. That I wasn't there for? Yeah. And that he was not there. I got there five minutes late. Um, uh, the point is that uh, Bill gave a, a dynamite presentation on the county budget. The best presentation I have ever seen in the 47 years I've been in the city of Phoenix and this time around in Arizona. It was a, a presentation of a budget that would be welcomed at most corporate levels. The city of Phoenix has never put together a budget like that, a presentation like that, and continues not to do so. And how you can vote on a budget when you don't know where you've been and where it's going and what it's going for is beyond me. How we can look at expenses and have no comparison with what we spent last year, the year before that, the year before that, and what we project to do in the future. I, my entire professional life has been dealing with budgets at very high levels with a Fortune 50 company and no company would survive with this kind of a budget presentation. No one could, in good conscience, approve it. And I suggest to you that you maybe talk to Bill Gates and the rest of the supervisors over there and take a leaf out of their book as to how they present their budget so that it's very clear where they're going, where the money came from, how it got there, what they intend to do with it, and how they're gonna be accountable for it. And this is something that City of Phoenix has never done I've, I've suggested on numerous occasions that they go to a full-fledged zero-based budget system and they go to a modified budget zero-based system. But I don't see that zero-based in 
any of the presentations that go around the city, it, it's a farce, it's a, it's, it's a joke. And why you even spend the money to go out and try to inform people when you're not informing them of anything is beyond me. So that's my lecture for today. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Uh, Luis Acosta. Mayor and Council, thank you for our time today. I'm a former employee of 16 years. The thing about these budgets that really upset me is that when I was employed by the city, I seen the millions of dollars of waste that was being mis mismanaged. In many cases, items were being ordered, put on the shelf to later be disposed of as salvage. I seen this over and over and over. The other thing is, is that the city of Phoenix management often retaliates 99.9% .9 of the time against the whistleblowers who want to protect the tax dollars. I spent $35,000 to go to the Washington Supreme Court to make a point in regards to what I'm talking about. The city manager needs to start enforcing the whistleblowers who want to do the best in the interest of the taxpayer. And what I mean by that, you have managers who don't know how to manage who get promoted under the good old boy system, even though they may not have an education or an experience in management. And the other thing I saw, on almost every single department, you have one foreman making, let's say, $60,000 a year, and, they're at, and they only manage four to five people. This is citywide, a citywide practice. Why does it take one foreman to supervise five people? I was shifted intentionally to shut me up to five different departments. Every department I, I went to, I blew the whistle. I still have old documents. I saved the taxpayers $1.5 million over 15 years because management couldn't do it. I wasn't in management. I was a frontline employee. All they did was retaliate, retaliate, retaliate. The city spends many dollars to send its staff to civil treatment and diversity. And they, and they take them out of work to teach these classes. The classes are a joke. Why? Because management does not enforce those policies which could save tax dollars and keep these budgets from growing and growing and growing in waste. Thank you. Uh, we will go back to roll call. I think you had one item before we suspended. DeCicio. No. Gallego? Yes. Noah Kalski? No. Pastor? I will continue with my vote as in the past. I'm a no vote because I'm extremely disappointed uh, that the budget does not contain the designated items that the community has asked for. Dark? Yes. Valenzuela? Yes. Waring? No. Mayor Williams? Yes. I believe that's four to four, so it fails. I have no idea what we do now. Let's go to item 66. It's the adoption of the final 2018-2019 capital funds budget. Mayor, I move that item 66 being ordinance S44782, the final 2018-2019 capital funds budget be adopted. Second. I think this is the first time we've ever had a budget fail. Yeah. Please, no. Mayor, it needed to fail. It's completely pure mismanagement at the city of Phoenix. It's the first time in history, and it needed to fail. It's the only way you send a message. A message of no faith. Um, I think
think we have a motion. Did I have a second? Yeah, you did. Second. Um, roll call. DeCicio. Uh, just to confirm, this is the reauthorization budget, correct? Capital. Capital funds budget. Oh, capital. Yes, I'm sorry. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. No. Mayor Williams. Yes. That's seven to one. Seven to one. Uh, we are now to item 67, is the adoption of the final 2018-2019 reappropriated fund budget. Move, move approval. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Just a, may I ask a question? Surely. So our budget person left, but maybe if somebody in front of me can confirm, this is simply the holdover items that we have to pay for, for stuff that's already happened, correct? This is not the new budget going forward. Last three items before you are simply to allow you to pay bills that you committed to in prior fiscal years. Thank you. Any other questions? Roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Eight to zero. I believe now we want to adjourn this special meeting. Mayor, before we move on, can I just say that Mr. Barton, you do an excellent job. All the city staff does an excellent job. They have to put up with a lot of criticism, especially from the council. And I apologize for our behavior if we've upset you. You are a fine budget director. Thank you. Yes. I will allow appreciation. Because yeah. I, Jeff, you have always been very responsive. I know that uh, you bring each of the council members a binder early in the process, very early, usually uh, that is very itemized. It shows last year's expenditures. It shows line items that are proposed for the coming year. Uh, a thorough explanation is always given if there's any questions. It is very easy to read and I truly, truly appreciate it. So you do great work as do other city employees and uh, you are appreciated and respected. So thank you very much. Mayor, may I say something? Yes. So my thoughts on this are, are well known. I've had issues with the budget since I've been on the council, which is almost seven years, which is kind of hard to believe. So my no vote probably isn't a surprise. Some people may have switched their votes in the last month or so, or even the last hour or so, but they get elected by voters, not the staff. They're under absolutely no obligation to vote for anything. So they get to use independent judgment and frankly, um, you know, somebody probably should have asked them if they were voting for this. That's not my responsibility. I knew how I was going to vote. So, uh, so I understand my colleagues. I'm, this is not, my vote is not a criticism of staff in any way. I have been critical of staff when it is warranted. In Jeff's case, that, that hasn't been an issue uh, in terms of his work putting together budgets. But, so it's not a criticism of him. It is simply a criticism of some of the things that are in the budget and so forth uh, for my part. So thank you. Mayor. Councilman Valenzuela. Thank you. It's on, it's on everyone. It's everyone's responsibility to move this city forward. And if you're not going to take the responsibility to move our city forward, then you shouldn't ask for the responsibility to sit here on this dais and represent a council district or the city. Uh, every council member is representing the city. Yes, we have a district system in place, uh, but, but we are all, uh, we're all here for the city at large as well. This budget represents moving our, our city forward. There's funding in the budget for libraries. There's funding in the budget that, uh, for our infrastructure needs, for public safety needs, for the arts. This budget represents moving our city forward. And I know that uh, we can have another vote 
uh, in the very near future. I'm committed to working with my colleagues to bring this budget vote back to the, to the uh, council chambers to this day so that we can have a vote. Uh, I know that there are, are some frustrations, but this is not Congress. This is not a time to start kicking the can down the road to continue to uh, you know, pretend how we're going to figure out how we pay for public safety needs, homeless issues, uh, and so on. Uh, this is not Congress. This is local government. It's hard. The problem solving is hard. And this is a, a big problem that, that we're, we're going to solve. We will solve this problem. We are going to work together. We are going to have this item come back to the council and, and we'll, we're gonna find a way to, to get a budget passed here uh, soon. I'm committed uh, to, to doing that. We are, I'm committed to doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Council Levin. Um, as you had seen in uh, previous uh, meetings, I had voted no. And the reason why I'd voted no was because a population of constituents were we making requests and were basically ignored and so uh, if Jeff if it gives you any comfort this isn't about this isn't about you this is about at this moment uh, my vote was about a whole constituency that I represent that is asking for something, and uh, I took a stance. So I know your work. Your work is great. It's fine. I trust your work, just like all the other colleagues up here. And so I just want to let you know that it's coming from me that you, you and I know where, you, where I come from. And so that's my no vote. Mayor. Councilman. In the budget hearings, I always start off is that we want to hear what the needs are. There's a lot of wants, but we want to find out what the needs are and that we want to be good stewards of your tax dollars. After last night sitting here for five hours and listening to individuals talk about how they were never informed about the light rail, about the four lanes being reduced to two lanes, concerns me. There, there's some matters in our budget that I need to have some answers and I need to have some discussion with our staff and I'm not just going to rubber stamp this budget. I'm going to ask those questions that I've heard last night from individuals and in the past council meetings and once I get those answers answered then I would have I would ask for reconsideration but in, until then I'm a no vote because of that reason. I want to make sure that this budget reflects all those individuals that I represent in my district. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Items 68, 69, and 70 are legally required amendments to the current 2017-18 budget allowing the city to close out the current fiscal year's budgetary accounts and proceed with the annual independent audit. Is that still appropriate? Yes, okay. Sixty-eight amends 2017. 18 annual operating funds budget to authorize reallocating appropriations. Mayor, I move that item 68 being ordinance S44748, the required realloc reallocation of the 2017-18 operating budget appropriations be adopted. Do I have a second? Second. And we have a second. Roll call, please. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Waring. Mayor Williams. Yes. Is that 8-0? Yes. 
uh, item 69 amends the 2017 18 capital funds budget to authorize reallocating appropriations. Mayor, I move that item 69, being ordinance S44783, the required reallocation of the 2017 18 capital funds budget, be approved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. DeCicio. You dropped his phone. DeCicio. Gallego. Yes. Are you back, Cal Councilman? I am. Okay. Yeah. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Item 70 amends the 2017 18 annual reappropriated funds budget to authorize reallocating appropriations. Move approval. Mayor, I move that item 70 be ordina uh, being ordinance S44747, the, re the required reallocation of the 2017-18 reappropriated funds ba budget appropriations be approved. You say that three times Second. fast. Second. <laughs> Roll call. DeCicio. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Uh, Mayor, may I make a comment? Yes, you may. I, uh, eight to zero. Eight to zero. Okay. I want to join uh, Councilwoman Stark in saying thank you to our budget director. I think we have an open process over many months. Uh, there have been times when I've seen changes we need to make in the budget and have made, tried to make suggestions at, at meetings ahead of time and accommodate them. I think probably budgeting from the dais is not the easiest way to do it. Um, but I think the public safety subcommittee took some items forward that were meant to respond to the questions that uh, Councilwoman Pastor had raised on some of the police items. So I believe that there's an item coming to us um, at a future council meeting, I think the July 5th related to additional training for police officers. And I was wondering if it might make, uh, address some of Councilwoman Pastor's concerns, if we could maybe bring that forward and incorporate that into the budget today. Is, is there a way to address concerns and, and move this forward? And, and I guess, can we legally do so? At this point in time, from the budgetary standpoint, you cannot change the size or s size of the budget. The budget has to remain as is, as you voted a few weeks ago. So you can shift within. The easiest thing to do would be, like we talked about a few weeks ago, is have an allocation within the risk management fund, which is not a budgetary fund, and have that be allocated specifically for the purposes that you intend. That way, the rest of the budget stays intact as originally planned. Any other questions? Hearing none, I will declare, oh, sorry. So, Mayor, members of the council, so then on that basis, if, if that were done, a motion to reconsider could be made today, but unfortunately can't be voted on for at least 24 hours. So. Okay. Does anyone want to make said motion today? It has to be on the um, winning side, correct? I hear no response, so I am taking it there is no one who wants to make the motion today. Okay. That's the end of the special proceedings for the budget items. We are now to item 93. I will make the motion. <laughs> Move item 93. Or 70. Are we 93? Oh, it's okay. 75. Five. Okay, move item 75. Is there any uh, comments, questions? Councilman DeCicio? I'm here. Uh, no, no comment. No comment? Okay. Uh, roll call, no, please. You. I made a motion for an item 75. I need a second. Yeah. yeah. Roll call. DeCicio? No. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Item 76. 
is the pool chemicals. Move item 76. I have a motion to approve and a second. Uh, any comments? The item is 93, Mayor. I couldn't hear. Uh, this is the pool chemicals, item 76, to purchase okay, pool chemicals right. for the Parks and Recreation Department. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Item 93. I move item 93. Go ahead. And we have a second. Third. Any comments? Yeah. Roll call, please. DeCicio. No. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. No. Mayor Williams. Yes. Six to two. Yes. Uh, item number 95. Move approval. Do I have a second? Okay, I now have a second. Uh, this is the Hans Park. Yeah. Roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. No. Mayor Williams. Yes. Seven to one. Uh, brings us to item 96. Mayor. I my yes. apologies if I may interrupt. We, we have an, a reason to go back to item number 71, a legal reason if we could. It appears that there may be a council person who needs to note a potential conflict and then call for a vote again on, may, on item 71 if we could. Oh. So we would need somebody in the majority, which I think everybody was pretty much, to re, uh, move to reconsider. Move to reconsider item 71. Second. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. And now we'll need a motion on item 71, and before the vote's taken, then a council person may declare a conflict. Approve item 71. I, I need to declare a conflict. <laughs> we, we have a second, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Dan. Now a vote. I'm so okay. sorry. My Roll bad. Roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Stark. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. I think that brings us to item 96. Um, Thank you, Mayor. Oh. oh, we have Sal on the phone. Oh, yeah, we have. Just move. Motion approved on item 96. Second. Second. Okay, we have a second. Uh, roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. No. Mayor Williams. Yes. Uh, 97. No, six to one. Do I have a second? I have a motion and a second. Oh, we have lots of cards. Michael Angelo. Angulo. Good afternoon, Mayor Williams and members of council. My name is Michael Angulo and I reside at 1412 East Yale Street in Phoenix. I'm here today because I believe the sale of the city owned land at Central and Adams is improperly before you. Chapter 2, Section 2M of the Phoenix City Charter gives the city the power to have and, ex and exercise all powers conferred upon municipal corporations by the act of the first session of the legislature of Arizona, chapter 67, entitled, An Act to Authorize Municipal Corporations of the State of Arizona to Sell and Dispose of Their Real and Personal Property and Prescribe the Method Thereof. This act cited by the city charter states, Before any such sale shall be made or negotiated, 
the common council or other legislative or governing body shall cause a special election to be held at which shall be submitted to the qualified electors of said city or town the question of selling or not selling the property proposed to be disposed of. It appears to me that the city, that the city charter outlines a very specific and important step in the selling of city-owned property. The voters of Phoenix must first approve the sale at the ballot box. This step has not yet been taken. Therefore, I believe the sale of city-owned land at Central and Adams should be postponed until an election can take place. Based on the charter of our city, it is Phoenix voters who should be the first ones to, um, the first ones to say whether or not they should sell. I have a letter and supporting documents for each one of you to be entered into the official record, as well as documents for the city attorney and the city manager. Okay. Next card is Sandy Villatoro. Um, hello, Mayor uh, Williams and members of council. My name is Sandy Villatoro, and I live at 2227 North 25th Place in Phoenix. I am here to share my concerns about the Central and Adams project as a hotel worker at the Sheraton Grand in downtown Phoenix. I know the importance of bringing guests to our city. I have looked at the two proposals and have received to buy has received to buy the land and I am confused why today's bidder was preferred. Their proposal is offering the city $700,000 less and on top of that, they don't seem to have the best potential for tourism revenue to the city. Besides offering more money for the land, the other developer wants to de build a project with more hotel rooms. More hotel rooms means tens of thousands of dollars in additional hotel occupancy taxes going to our city. With more hotel rooms, more hotel guests will have an opportunity to come to our city. More hotel guests means that more tourist dollars contributing to our growing economy. It also means more sales tax coming from downtown bars, restaurants, and shops. I know that when guests come and stay at a hotel, they eat and drink and shop all over the city. The Arizona Office of Tourism estimates that the 43 million people who visit the state in 2006 collectively spent $21.2 billion. Imagine if Phoenix could get a better slice of that pie. I ask you all to hold off on the sale of the land of Central and Adams until you can ensure us, Phoenix residents and taxpayers, that we are getting the best deal. Thank you. Thank you. Maggie Acosta. Good afternoon, Mayor, Mayor Williams and council members. My name is Maggie Acosta and I live at 7007 uh, West Indian School Road in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm here today in opposition to the proposed sale of city-owned land at Central and Adams. The buyer of the parcel has offered to pay the city $2.8 million. Another developer has offered the city $3.5 million. Why is the city going with a lower price? I urge you all to take more time to examine this sale before deciding to forego $700,000. Imagine what the city could do with an additional seven, 700000 Consider the uh, Phoenix Fire Department. In the city's budget for next year, the total proposed general fund budget addition for the Phoenix Fire Department is 342000 the additional funds generated by the city sale to the higher bidder could more than double the amount of funds given to our fire department. Or what about our beautiful parks? The budget gives 256,000 to the parks and recreation department, adding additional park rangers. Our city will now be just two positions so short of the pre-recession peak of 81 total park rangers. What a great victory for our city. 
But imagine what could we do for our parks and our residents with the addition of hundreds of thousands of dollars offered by the higher bidder in the sale of, the, of Central and Adams parcel. I believe that this council and the city should take more time to examine the benefits we could really see by selling the Central and Adams um, parcel to a higher bidder. I ask you to delay the, today's vote. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Catherine Casaniga. Good afternoon, Mayor Williams, members of council. I live at 801 West Turney, Phoenix, Arizona. The city commissioned an appraisal of the land at Central and Adams, and the appraisal notes, and this is a quote, conversations with several brokers during the course of this and other recent assignments revealed that the marketing time for downtown development is relatively short, as there are multiple bidders for most potential transactions, and considering the current increasing market demand for vacant land, an exposure of 12 months or less has been estimated for the subject. This appraisal has, has, was certified on August 5th of last year, more than 10 months ago. If this deal is approved today, the developer will have an additional six months to enter into a sales agreement with the city. It seems very hard to avoid the reality that if you all move forward today with the sale of the city-owned land at Central and Adams, you will most likely be selling the prime piece of property downtown at a submarket rate. I, be, I believe that you all should delay today's vote and weigh whether or not you actually feel comfortable in selling a valuable city-owned asset at a potentially deflated, deflated price. It seems to be kind of a bad business deal. Thank you. <clears throat> Chris Mackey, could you explain what this is and how you arrived at this uh, seller? Absolutely, Mayor, thank you. Uh, this was an item that came before the council in the fall of 2017 with staff requesting city's recommendation, uh, city council's recommendation to take this out for request for proposal. During that process, we identified what the scoring criteria would be through the uh, panel uh, uh, options. What we did, uh, we took it out for request for proposal at the council's direction with your recommended scoring proposals. And those scoring proposals were as follows. The concept to activate the site had the highest amount at 375 points, the public benefits and financial return to the city at 325 points, and the qualification and experience of the developer had 300 points. We did have that out. We issued the RFP on November 2nd of last year and had it open for 60 days. We had two responsive proposers, both of them offering to build a hotel on the site. Uh, we did seat an independent panel. They interviewed both applicants and came to the scoring concurrence that they would go with the recommended proposer who's here today. The recommended proposer here today did score at 930 points and the second applicant did score at 765 points. Uh, the, the information you've been provided today is correct. The second score did offer 700,000 additional over the site's appraised value of 2.3 million. The recommended proposer today offered $70,000 over the appraised value. But as council gives us direction to look at, we look at the long-term value for the city and what the direct tax benefit for the city will be not in one cash transaction, but over a 10-year period. And in that 10-year period of time, we did run an economic impact analysis based on the two submittals. And the recommended proposer today, although their offer price in cash is less than what would be received by the city today, uh, they will actually bring $2.8 million more in additional direct sales tax to the city of Phoenix over a 10-year period of time. So from an economic analysis and that the applicant that has the greatest benefit, financial benefit to the city, it is the proposer we have before you today. Mayor. Councilman. In that this is in my district, I'd like to um, continue this until next um, council meeting to get some of these questions answered. Do we have a second? I, I heard this in subcommittee and uh, I, 
Councilman Nowakowski. I heard this in subcommittee, and so uh, there were several questions that were asked, very similar questions that were asked, and uh, I'm okay with the vote, but okay. I don't know. Uh, what, what, is this, what does this do if, if this gets continued for, uh, what is it, a week? What does it do to the, to the project or the timeline? <laughs> I mean, it, it's been a standard practice that we did hear this in the subcommittee. I think the councilman is, is correct. And we did, uh, we had an opportunity to ask a lot of questions. It's been, a, and in fact, you voted for it, councilman, after asking all the questions. But there is a, a standard uh, practice that we, it's common courtesy to give our members more time, but I uh, want to know how this will impact the, the project. Mayor Councilman Valenzuela, if you'll give me just a moment to look to the recommended proposer and, and get his thoughts. Unfortunately, the proposer doesn't plan to, wasn't going to be in town for the 27th, but I will leave it up to absolutely at the discretion of the council. I'll be here. Can, can I ask a question? I'm not on the subcommittee. Um, this, is a, this is a straight transaction. It's not Jeep lit. It's not any of their stuff we usually talk about, correct? Mayor Councilman Waring, you are correct. There are no financial incentives being provided. This is a straight land transaction. Okay, I think the motion lacks for the second. Uh, do I have a motion, another motion? Motion to approve item 98. You already have a motion in the second. Oh, okay. I'm, oh. I'm like confused. We had a motion prior. I'm sorry. To approve, not to continue. Uh, what? I, I thought so. Oh, call. Uh, okay. No. Oh. Mayor, the item number? 97. Seven. Okay. Thank you. Roll call. To okay. CCO. Yeah. Gallego. Yes. Noah Kowski. Mayor, I want to explain my vote. I'm going to vote no on this because I think that there's some questions I still need to be answered. But I'm very supportive of, of this project, and um, but there is some concerns. Pastor, I'll change my vote then too, Mayor, to no. Okay. Yes. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Six to two. 98? Yes. Item. Mayor, move to approve item 98. Second. Uh, Councilman DeCicio, did you want to make comments? Thank you for asking, but no, Mayor. Okay. Uh, roll call. DeCicio. No. Gallego. Yes. Noah Kowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Uh, 99. Move to approve item 99. Second. We have a motion. Oh, wait. I have a conflict on this one. Sorry. I just read Second. It. Mayor, can I ask a question? Yes, you may. I'm conflicted. Uh, Chris, now. this does not affect the taxes of the surrounding areas, correct? As we discussed. Mayor Councilman Waring, you are correct. It does not affect the existing property tax that the client is paying today, and it does not affect the property tax for the surrounding taxpayers. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Mayor, just a brief comment. I am one of the council members who are lucky enough to represent Honeywell, and they have been a great employer with very high wage jobs. It would be wonderful if we can continue to grow their presence in the Valley, and I want to thank the Economic Development Department for partnering with them and helping us compete in this area. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hearing none, roll call. Oh, I declare conflict. To CCO. Yes. Yeah. Gallego. Yes. Noah Kowski. Yes. Yeah. Pass uh, Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Uh, item three, I think was included in the uh, omnibus. So at 104 is the comparison chopping. Did you want to make a comment, Councilman De CCO? No, thank you, Mayor. I'm going to save all my comments for the light rail. Okay. 
<laughs> we, ha we haven't. Oh, that's not good news. <laughs> I don't know if that was a surprise to you or not. Um, why I'm sure. We haven't moved it, right? No, we haven't. We haven't moved it. Yeah. All right, ready for it. Move to approve item 104. Second. Roll call. DeCicio. No. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Item 106. Move item 106. Do I have a second? We now have a second. Comments? Hearing none, roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. No. Mayor Williams. Yes. Uh, item 115. Mayor moved to approve item. item one, okay. Oh, moved to approve item 115. Second. Unless Councilman Pastor wants to do it. I'll just give you the <laughs> second. Councilman DeCicio, did you want to make comments? Or are you still saving them? He's saving. I take it he's saving them, so roll call. That's correct. Sorry about that. DeCicio. I'll be voting yes on this. No. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Seven to one. Uh, we are now to item 154. Mayor, move to approve item 120. Second. Oh. I need new glasses. That's what my problem is. Item 120 says, Carol Spellberg, only if necessary, is in favor. The motion, I believe, is to approve. So, did you want to speak? No, they're waving off. Okay. No, nope, waving off. Um, roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. All right. Let's oh. Past what was it? Eight zero. Eight zero. Move to approve item one fifty four. Second. Any comments? Cards? One fifty four is in favor. Gigi George. Did you want to speak? It's in favor. <laughs> the only thing I was going to say is I want to thank all the people that participated in getting this this far for the Norton House. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Roll call. DeCicio. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. Yes. Waring. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. Move item 156. Do I have a second? Mayor, members of council, uh, this uh, item 156 is a public hearing item. Okay. I don't have that sheet. Let me find it. Oh. It's just a public hearing? J just a public hearing. Um, we don't need to have any uh, vote on this particular matter. I'm happy to explain further if the, if the council desires. Okay, I just opened the public meeting. Could you explain that? Mayor, members of council, item 156 is a public hearing regarding an audit of land use assumptions, infrastructure improvement plans, and development fees for the city's infrastructure financing program that funds uh, new infrastructure in our high growth areas on the north and south sides of the city. This is an audit that uh, complies with state statute. The uh, consultant the city hired, Raffaellis Financial Consultants, performed the uh, necessary work. We did have a meeting with all the stakeholders who pay these impact fees. Uh, they reviewed that information. Those consisted of uh, folks like the Arizona Multi-Housing Association, Home Builders Association, Valley Partnership. They were all very supportive. Uh, the audit recommendations find that we're in full compliance with the state statute. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Hearing none, thank you very much for the report and the good audit. Meeting closed. I'd like to take a five minute break. And um, I, I will tell you when we get to uh, the item, promptly, what number is it? 
160. I would appreciate if you would find two to speak on the pro side and two to speak on the con side because we listened for five hours yesterday and I think we listened uh, so we clearly understand where it's at. So you could take this time to, to select two people to speak for you.
I want to call the meeting back to order. I just got to find the council people. I will forewarn you right now, we are not going to spend hours here listening again. We listened for a long time last night. We understood very clearly. So if I can get the council members back, Council DeCici, are you still on the phone? I am. I wouldn't miss this meeting for the world. <laughs> I'm just double checking. Uh, thank you for that, Mayor. Okay. I'm only short one. one. Well, I'll go ahead and proceed. And first, is there a motion? Mayor, I'd like to make a motion. I move the council to direct staff and the Valley Metro to provide an alternative right of way designed of South Central Light Rail extension with four vehicles through um, lanes to the full extent possible within the federal approved environmental footprint and begin a full comprehensive business and community engagement process facilitated by an independent facilitator to specifically discuss the full impact, cost, and benefit of a four-line design. Do I have okay. a second? Second. I have a motion. Mayor? Yes. Mayor? Yes. May I ask that there be a friendly motion in there too? I would support that, even though I don't support the light rail, because this gives the public at least some breathing room that no more money gets expended, no staff, nothing occurs until this study comes back. Well, how do you expect them to pay for the study, the people that will do the study? Mayor, I'm not disagreeing on that end. What I'm saying is the current plan, I should have been more clear that nothing happens on the current plan, nothing moves forward, no bid, nothing occurs on the current plan until this comes back. Mario, can you tell me what's happening right now? That My I, concern, Mayor, is the public's going to get gamed again. No, I understand where you're coming from. I just want to make sure that any preliminary work they're doing would be applicable to that motion as part of the study. Yes. I, I wouldn't do anything right now, Mayor, because anything is going to be, it's going to be gamed. And the only way you hold government accountable is you've got to be able to put these firm things in there. I, I guess I'm not sure what you mean and how they do the study. Could you explain that to me? The study in itself, I'm fine with. I think that's, okay. that's more than adequate. But the problem is, the city of Phoenix is going to keep moving forward on their other plan of the two lane. You want to stop the two lane until the study is completed. We have to submit by July 31st, and I think we can do so that. With, now, wait. Now, listen. Sorry, with, I'm listening. With, I'm sorry. Okay. Without a specific plan, as I understand it. Is that correct, Mario? Or, or Mr. Yes, Scott? Mayor, uh, and, and I can have Scott Smith jump in uh, as needed. Mayor, members of the council, the, uh, the submission that needs to occur by July 31st is, is necessary in order to keep the federal process uh, moving and to make sure that the federal funds continue to be uh, in play and, uh, and not, and, and, and not um, result in the South Central Extension being removed from the current federal process and have to start all over because we didn't meet the deadline to enter into the engineering phase. That's what that deadline, that submission is for on July 31st. So uh, my, uh, I guess what I would say is in order to keep the federal funding uh, alive and uh, allowed for the project in the current process, that submission does need to occur by July 31st in, to enter into the engineering phase. So uh, my understanding well, about the submission. Well, wait, wait. Are you finished? Uh, no. And I was going to say, no, I, okay, Scott Smith ahead. is here and can can e expand in any areas that I that I didn't cover. Well, the submission 
include a two-lane design, or what? what is the language that's going to be in the submission okay. that would tie it to two lanes? Uh, Mr. Smith is going to answer you. Yeah, Mayor, um, we are currently at about 60% design, which follows previous council directions, which has the two-lane configuration. Uh, that is not set in stone, the two-lane. It's only a 60% design. Uh, as long as we maintain and stay within the footprint, and, and there are risks about related to changes that are made, but it is not set in stone uh, until, until we get to the point where we're at 100% design, and we're, way, we're a long way away from that. So this is an ongoing process, and, and we are constantly still talking with the community on other issues that will be made, uh, uh, that will make changes to. So we can, we can continue on and meet the federal uh, requirements and continue on with a study uh, related to the four lane. We've already begun some of that initial work uh, without, uh, and create full, uh, full uh, transparency uh, and inclusion of the community. I think we've heard it very loud and clear. <laughs> And I think that, uh, that, that uh, we will certainly be under a microscope as to how open we are. So we have that charge and we, we have that, uh, that challenge, which we will live up to. But we can conduct, uh, we can continue on with the, with the FTA process, ensure that we're still in the game for federal funding while also continuing on with uh, design refinements and studies. Thank you, Councilman Nolkes. Mayor? Uh, Councilman Nolkes. Mayor? Oh, Mayor, I'd like to finish my questioning. All right, quick. You, no, I'm not going to be quick. I'm well, sorry. Well, and Councilman Nowakowski has a follow-up to you. Excuse me? Councilman. I thought I was asking questions here. Am I not allowed to? You are allowed to answer or ask questions. Councilman Nowakowski said he had a partial answer for you. Okay. Councilman Nowakowski, did you want to speak? And then we'll oh. go back to Councilman DeCicio. Absolutely. So one of the reasons why I made this motion was that last night after listening five hours of testimonies, one of the things that we heard is that there wasn't an outreach and that we wanna make sure that every single business, every single residence between 7th Street and 7th Avenue has an opportunity to have feedback and some type of vested interest in this program. We wanted to make sure that we had an independent facilitator, somebody outside the city of Phoenix, somebody outside of, um, Valley uh, Metro that can facilitate these meetings and make sure that the business owners, the residents, and the community is heard and that we can look at what has been approved by the environmental study and make sure that if four lanes are possible that we make that happen if that's what the, the desire of the community is. So it's a way for us to go back and really listen to what the community's wants and needs are and to make sure that we do the right thing. And I believe with this motion, it covers all those bases. Councilman Giussio. Yeah, I just got a question of Scott because he didn't answer my question. It was a long answer, but didn't answer the direct question. When you submit, are you submitting for a two lane or a four lane? When you're at 60% plan, that tells me you're gonna be submitting those plans to the federal government. Are those plans gonna be submitted? And two, is it gonna be for a two lane request or a four lane? Council member, the plans we are submitting are the plans based on the direction of this council, which are a two lane configuration. Those aren't final plans though. Those are only 60% design. They are not final until that. we get a full funded, well, you asked me and I'm telling you uh, that those are, those are plans that will be submitted because those are the, the, that's the direction we have received and that's the, that's the planning we have done to date. And you can modify those plans in the future? Those plans can be modified with, with uh, conditions, yep. with constraints, right. based on the federal process. But they can be modified. And the motion is... Mayor? Oh. Uh -uh. Go ahead. Go ahead. The I, motion... I'd like to just, oh. um, Councilman Nowakowski, the motion is directing staff. Can you, you have that? I don't have it in front of me. Directing staff to... Uh, look at a four lane uh, consideration within the environmental study. That, I, that's how I understand it, yes. yes. So, uh, Which we are, we are more than willing to do. And, and, so, and, and I mean, to, to answer some of the questions, I, I think as, as Councilmember Nowakowski said, uh, obviously through this process, uh, which has been an arduous and very uh, emotional process, we understand that uh, outreach is essential right now. And we're not, we're not, uh, one, one bit uh, reluctant to open this process up and to discuss all of the, uh, uh, all of the issues that are involved with a four lane and a two lane. I think one of the things that has been lost 
has been the full story as to why we're even looking at a, at a two-lane design at this time, why that was approved. And, and we welcome the opportunity to have a full and complete uh, discussion with the community to show, uh, to show how we arrived, what challenges we have, what limitations we're operating under, and what opportunities we have, and we welcome that. Okay, Councilman Susan. Mayor. And then Councilman, yes. or Vice Mayor Wary. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So we've been told repeatedly that a four lane will not fit within the configuration. What changed? Five hours worth. <laughs> well, no. Mayor, Mayor, if I could, no. Mayor, if I could, nothing is nothing has well, changed. Nothing has changed. And uh, if this were a simple process, as just drawing lines on a road, which I think, unfortunately, through this discussion, it's been reduced to drawing lines on the road. Uh, you know, life might be a little easier. The the challenge we have is that this is not a simple discussion. When you start reconfiguring this, there are other issues that have come up. And remember, this was this, and, and to go back to why we're at two lanes right now, uh, years ago, uh, and as I've read the record, uh, there were two primary goals and objectives as uh, the city and Valley Metro looked toward extending so uh, light rail into South, South Phoenix. One was to extend the light rail, to tie into the system. It was. Uh, uh, and I remember I was building a lot of homes in, in, when this debate was going on, and it seemed sort of interesting that at that time, the discussion, speaking of South, South Phoenix, was don't give us what you're giving the other city. We want light rail. But the other consideration, which was equally important, was to maintain the culture, heritage, and makeup of, of South Phoenix. We did not want to destroy what South Central is in order to put light rail in. And the reason, the primary reason for the two lanes is as we got down as the designers at the time got down to the southern part and they saw the tight configuration, you had buildings and businesses close to the street, they realized we were gonna to have to make a choice. We can go, we can maintain four lanes, and to do that, you were basically gonna tear down between 60 and 80 buildings, either wholly or partially, which would violate the, prim the other primary objective because there's no doubt that destroying that many buildings would change the very nature of that section of Central Avenue. And that was, that was the primary driver behind going to two lanes, is because we could avoid uh, uh, dis, uh, tearing down that many buildings and taking that many uh, pieces of property. So the, the question was maximize the footprint, which wasn't enough to get two lanes, and in addition to the buildings, to maintain things like walkable sidewalks, bike lanes, landscaping, other things which the community expressed was of high interest. They didn't want just a utilitarian, they wanted an improved street. Now, we, in our preliminary reviews, we can go back and draw lines on, a, uh, uh, on, a, on the street, but there will be trade-offs. The trade-offs will be that you probably won't have um, sidewalks as wide. You won't have landscaping. There may be, uh, there may be points where the left turns are, uh, are challenged and you will have disruptions in traffic. There will be other times when you cannot put right turn lanes in. So there will be disruptions. And what we want to look at and come back to the community is discuss that situation. The reason we can't widen the road is twofold right now. That would be the easy fix from a street standpoint, but there are two things. Number one, we did a very extensive environmental assessment based on the configuration where we were not tearing down buildings. In order to accommodate both desires of the community, which was to make, keep Central Avenue with the heritage and the culture and the makeup that it has and not tear down buildings while also building light rail, we would have to go outside that envelope, which would completely disrupt the federal process and probably cause us to lose money. But more importantly, we'd have to tear down buildings. And I think that uh, the community has been loud and clear to us, even more so that they don't want the businesses who are, are legitimately concerned about the impact of light rail well, I can tell you if their if their building is is torn down or moved, uh, that will absolutely disrupt their business. So we wanted to make, keep away from that, and that's why we've proceeded. We can we will like I said we welcome the opportunity to tell the full story, which is here's what here's the trade offs that will happen if we squeeze four lanes into this footprint, and there will be trade offs. And I welcome, as I said the opportunity because I think people have a better picture of the challenges we have, and then you can frankly choose which is most important. And we do have that opportunity to make that change. Mayor, yes. my last question. Okay. What the public just heard, and I'm gonna make it in plain English and direct, 
and not fancy words or fancy flowery things, is this. One, they're going to keep proceeding forward with the two lane. Two, you're about to be presented <laughs> with a plan that you're going to hate. So you're going to have to make a decision between the current plan that will destroy all your businesses and two, something you're going to hate having for your community because you're going to think it's ugly. That's exactly what you just heard. So I'm done with my questioning. Thank you, Mayor. Thank and, you. And Mayor, if I, Mayor, uh, if I could. Council, Councilman Wary. Mayor, if I could. Excuse me. Excuse me. Mayor, if I could, and I respectfully disagree with, with the council member, I'm dealing with facts. You can't stretch a street, you can't do anything. These are tough choices. And whenever we have any kind of, whether we're building a freeway or whatever, we make choices. And, and I, while I wasn't part of the process, I, I look at what was done in the original decision and they truly did consider the, the wants and the needs of the community. If those have changed, we can change that. And you know, whether it's ugly or not is, is what the community wants. I think the community was, has been very clear throughout and the two years I've been here, has been very clear that we don't want to destroy the, destroy the nature of, of, uh, of South Phoenix. Through this process, they will have every opportunity to- Oh, please. They will have, the, the citizens will have every opportunity to judge what is presented to them, to ask questions, and we will have an open and honest process. And then at the end of the day, if the, if the, if the citizens have decided we don't, we want to choose something else in that, we will work to see what we can do to, to, to make that happen within the confines of what we've got. No, Mayor, if Mayor. you're going to disrupt, you're going to be removed. So have some courtesy Mayor. and respect for speakers. Councilman DeCicero. Mayor, since I'm the elected official and I'd like to end with this. Again, this is code for, we are about to put together one of the crummiest plans on the planet that you're going to hate and you're going to be stuck with a bad decision either way. That's exactly what you just heard again, guys. Don't fall for this crap. And Councilmember DeCicio, I would welcome you to just come in and sit with us, with our planners, and have whatever questions you want. Challenge us. Ask, uh, ask whatever questions you would like to make sure that your questions are answered and that you understand uh, the, the facts and the realities Thank which you. are based I always have, have that right to do that, but the people I know you sitting do. in the oh, audience come on. don't have that right. And that's who you have avoided. You've purposely gone out of your way to do this. Now you're putting a sham deal together. It's just what it is. Okay, thank you. Councilman Wary, you. or Vice Mayor Wary. So, so for the members of the audience, um, I guess I would say this. I think your instincts are right. When you first came here in April, this is the other side of the city from the area I represent. So, so I've been voting against light rail projects for this almost seven years I've been on the council. Um, so it's not surprising I voted against this one. And um, you know, when, when folks came in and talked about this particular project, I recognized from other places I've driven, business owners I've known and so forth, the same complaints that I heard from them when it was actually built, not prospectively, like it was actually happening in their neighborhoods. So you were, you were right to get on this. Um, you know, it's just, it's after the vote, which happened in 2015, and, and there's been subsequent activity since, I guess, 60% of the planning. Uh, I've heard quite a bit of testimony from the folks sitting in front of us, enough to think, uh, I agree with Sal's conclusion that, that probably if it's a four lane street, you're not gonna like it because a lot of the businesses and stuff, they've just talked about the, the negative aspects of that for your community. I, I suspect if this light rail gets built where it's supposed to get built, on the streets it's supposed to get built on, the most of you here aren't going to like it. You know, it's going to have either, it's going to be two lanes, and you already expressed how you'll say about that, or a lot of businesses are going to go because you're going to be bulldozed to, to make room for the new train. Uh, so I think when you morphed from, we don't want one lane each way, we want two lanes each way, and then if we don't get that, we don't want light rail. If this is a math problem, I'd say you reached the right conclusion. You don't want the light rail. I recognize. Okay, enough. So I, Let him speak. I recognize uh, and respect the, the maker of the motion and what he's trying to accomplish. So he's been supportive of light rail, but wants this to change. 
I've heard enough here to wonder if that's really a possibility, which I think is the conclusion Sal reached. Um, I, I think you reached the right conclusion when you said, maybe we don't want the train. I recognize Councilman Gallego, who said something last night, if we all reflect on the five hours, it could go before the voters again, and it might pass again. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, but what I would like to have you have is the opportunity to know. It sounds like life can go on without light rail for a little bit longer if we may, which we may anyway, depending on how the vote today goes, miss some of the federal deadlines. I would prefer, as I've discussed with the city manager, I'm gonna make a substitute motion. I would make a substitute motion saying, we stop all activities related to this line of the light rail, that staff goes back and drafts language, which we have to do by July 9th, but July 5th is our last meeting, and I, I think you can make that deadline. Draft something to give voters a choice again. It would be on the ballot in November, potentially if the county has space. That's not up to us, but that's certainly something that could happen. I think that's a much better way to gauge public opinion on an issue than what I've heard, and I'm not disrespecting the folks sitting in front of me, but I've heard a lot about what South Phoenix wants, but I heard Councilman Nowakowski very clearly talk yesterday about, I think 11 people went to one meeting, 24 people went to another, so I guess if that's what we're basing it on, and I don't know what else you'd be basing it on, was there polling done? They put out the door hangers, but apparently didn't realize nobody got them. So, and I'm, again, I'm not criticizing the door hanger. I mean, they don't have enough money to advertise in the Super Bowl. So they can only do what they can do within the budget that they have. They, they put ads in the newspaper. You know, not everybody gets the newspaper. You put stuff online, only two thirds of the people in Arizona have access to stuff online. At some point, you're, you're a little bit limited. Um, they probably could have done more. I think they acknowledge that today, but, but it's too late for all that now. It's happening now to you, 60% plan. Uh, so my druthers will be to go back and let you have a choice again. Not everybody will vote. Remember it was 21% last time, but this is a November election and a gubernatorial year. So about triple, probably more than triple actually, of that number are gonna vote. This would be more like 70 or 75%. If you don't vote or you vote for it and you don't like it, we don't have to have any more of these meetings. You had your say. But that would be what I would like to see. So as a substitute, that's my motion that staff goes back, drafts language, we table everything for, I guess, a couple weeks till July 5th, and let voters decide whether this is something that they want to do. Um, I, I don't even know if I'll have a second for my motion. I didn't know what was going to happen today. I didn't know what the, the motion was going to be. And because of meeting laws, we can't all discuss it together and so forth. So uh, it's procedural mumbo jumbo that you guys don't necessarily need to know, but it affects how we interact with each other. Mm. So, so unfortunately, much as I'd like to accept your second, audience doesn't count. Please. So, uh, so the Mayor, I would second that. You have what you need to. I, okay. I would second that, but I've got to yes. make a comment. So we'll have too. a vote on it, and we'll see what, what comes back. And well, I've got to let the public know. It. Pardon me? Pardon. I've got to let the public know, too. I'm, I'll make the second, but I want to make sure that there's some clarifying language in that sure. motion, too, with the maker. One, you're talking about all future light rail. I think that would be the direction to go in. So I will, and, uh, I will say this, and I, I think we're going to have a discussion next week about other light rail lines. I thought out of, so I was strictly talking about this particular line out of respect for the people who here who frankly have changed, and I, I applaud you for that. As someone who's against light rail, I appreciate you provided the critical mass to have this discussion to potentially reevaluate these projects, which I think are prohibitively expensive and do not accomplish nearly what the claims are. So I, I personally, so last night there was a chart about a billion dollars in spending, right, in your community. I think Sal very forcefully and clearly said last night, nobody's talking about taking the money away from South Phoenix. We're not talking about taking the $220 million from the 2015 proposition and spending it in Thelda's district up north or something. That's not what anybody said. I thought he pretty clearly delineated that. Uh, the argument was, well, we're gonna lose all this federal money. I used to have that argument all the time in the state legislature. Look at it this way. Your kids want to go on vacation. You can buy a $5,000 vacation at a place they're not that crazy about, or you can spend 1000 bucks at a place that they love because you've gone there every year forever. Which would you rather do? 
I would argue to you, would you rather have the $220 million to spend as you see fit and participate in that, or would you rather have something that a lot of you don't really like and it's going to cause a lot of animus in an otherwise cohesive community, knock down businesses that have been standing for many years? Businesses, again, it's not my part of town, but businesses I frankly heard of, which is a little bit telling, considering it would take me a long time to drive there to go to them, but I know that they're there. So um, that is very concerning. Again, I come in with a bias. I'm anti-light rail, so you, are, you were speaking to the choir and had a receptive audience when you found me, but I will say this, this discussion wouldn't be happening if it hadn't been for you, and by making this motion, I don't necessarily expect to have success and get this to the ballot, but I wanted to give you your shot because I think ultimately you're going to look back and go, we should have just gone to kill that thing rather than, uh, than, than Mayor, potentially, Mayor, potentially have a thing that's not, not what we want. That's, that's the second, Mayor. I need more clarification i want to make sure too so this is just about south, uh, we're, we're, south line which was your first question no no that's correct and then the second part of it is all the money including the 18 million dollars per year of operating money just not just capital but operating that the city of phoenix has budgeted stays in south phoenix perfectly fine i i, I need a clarification because i I think I heard him say the $200 million would be available for other things, and is that correct? I assume transportation related. I shouldn't have been so flip with my language. So, so yeah, I, I just related. don't want people to think it's... Nope, nope. I, I agree. That was, no, that was wrong of me to put it so cavalier. Yes, Mayor, the members of the council. The council. I've been asking for months, if not a year, that same question. City staff doesn't know. And, and can I make one clarify, another clarifying? This is not the vote today to send something to the ballot. This is to ask staff to come back with the language. So the details of that, Sal raised two good points, just for clarification. Uh, I thought I had been clear. The money stays in South Phoenix. That would be the remainder. And that this is only about the one line. We will discuss the other lines later. I think these folks earn their shot to have a discussion about solely their item rather than commingling it with other areas where light rail maybe isn't as popular as perhaps it once could have been. So, okay. Mayor, Mayor, last point. Uh, last the point. Because they oh, have others. Point. Others no, want to I speak. know. I just want to make sure there's clarifying language there. Okay. Last point. This is the first I've heard that we're going to have a discussion next week on the light rail. Um, everyone knows I'm out of the country next week. Oh, so no. Was that I didn't know. I, I didn't well, know. Oh, welcome I mean, to the club, China. Uh, well, you were gamed on that one, Laura, and okay. I was set up on that one. <laughs> okay. Well, I was completely uh, set up on that. We can do an explanation. I don't think there's going to be a final vote next week. I think it's a discussion in the following week where we're talking about voting oh. on it. Yeah, so, I mean, we can brief you, bring you up to speed. Uh, I know that this is very similar to something I heard you talk about before, so. Thank you, Mayor. And, and Mayor, I will just say, so I, I was being intentionally vague, open meeting laws and so forth. I just, yeah. we had discussed putting something in there, so I understood the confusion. I was trying to be very vague and clarifying, so if that's my fault, I apologize. I'm trying to stay strictly within the law, so. And I appreciate it. Thank you, and I'm, I'm trying to, too, without I know, it's getting tricky. him. Uh, <laughs> Councilman Stark and then Thank Councilwoman. You. So the, the two million right. that was set aside was under Prop 104, correct? The, uh, Mayor and Councilman Stark, the 200 million that you're yeah, referring to, the 220 $2 million dollars that, yes, this is uh, Prop 104 T2050 correct. funds. So the Prop 104 went to all the voters of the city of Phoenix. So That's correct. only 20, 21% that showed up, but 20, now, if we take it back to the voters, all the voters get to vote again in the entire city. Correct. What if all of a sudden voters from District 1 and 2 and 3 and other districts say, hey, wait a minute, I want some of that money for my roads, and they vote it down because they're not included, and so South Phoenix loses out on everything. I, I think it's a dangerous vote. Jim, have we, you kind of thought through that? Because yes. Yeah, okay, I'd like to hear. So, I mean, we just very clearly said the staff is going to come back and draft something very clearly. This obviously would not be unanimous by the city, so the entire proposal would be on the ballot, including, I assume, maps 
in 2015, the maps were on there. They did not clearly delineate. For you folks who did vote for it, not understanding it could be two lanes instead of four. I mean, the, the maps are not huge. In this case, um, I would say you could probably clearly delineate that. You could also very clearly delineate that the money stays in South Phoenix. Voters would have yeah, an opportunity to know that. I, I mean, I, I don't think well, specificity please. should be a problem, but we haven't written it yet, so. Oh, never mind. Okay. All right. The speaker's uh, cards, I don't know. Mayor, Mayor, if I could add one thing on an election, just yeah. to add a little bit into it. Uh, the submittal on July 31st is a two to the FTA is a two-phase submittal. One is a design submittal uh, that has technical information. The other one is a financial plan because the Federal Transit Administration wants to make sure that they are assured funds. Based on the previous elections, uh, Prop 400 in 2004, which, which uh, uh, designates the regional funds that are going into this project, $150 million, and the uh, uh, Prop 104, T2050, which designates the city funds, this project has rated because there are, there are designated and assured monies. If there is an election called, that goes away because there are no longer assured monies. That in and of itself would probably kill the project. So if, you, if you're wanting to kill the project, that would be a good place to start. Would that because kill it would other be projects? Uncertain. It would be uncertain. Okay. What impact would it have on the Northwest area, phase two? Uh, that would go away also because all T2050 funds for all projects would be, uh, uh, would be uncertain at that point in time. Uh, uh, with the with the uh, uh, pending election, oh, that's a major problem. So, Mayor, oh, I think that's one pastor. And then to that uh, point, how many jobs are affected by all of this? We currently have over 300 people working on this uh, project, 320 to be exact. Uh, many South Phoenix residents. We have uh, uh, 17 artists uh, and uh, consultants, contractors. We are we are well down the road. Uh, as it relates to this project, uh, because we've been acting based on, on previous actions. Thank you. The City Council can move forward with light rail extensions without putting on the ballot, but we chose to put it on the ballot. We also chose to put maps on the ballot. That's very unusual. Uh, throughout the country, when we do transit elections, usually you don't have any kind of map at all. So we are going above and beyond to try to communicate extremely complicated decisions and, and involve the public. But we also, I really do think it is important uh, that the question that Councilwoman Pastor just asked, there's hundreds of people who are working on this. I want to send a message that the City of Phoenix is a good place to do business and that what the City Council makes a commitment, we follow through. Uh, coupled with the recent action on the budget, that's something we really do need to think about. When our business partners go out there and hire people, that's important. And they've gone out and partnered with great grassroots organizations to do workforce development. There's already extensive efforts. How do we reach out and hire people in the community? The construction phase, they had really impressive plans to work with people in the community and get them not only jobs, but also training and advanced skills so that you can have more of a lifetime of benefit from this program. It's, I think, become abundantly clear in this room today that this is not a debate about engineering and what the light rail will look like. This is a debate, do we want light rail or do we not want light rail? So we need to be honest about that. And, and some people are being very straightforward, but if we don't move forward with this project, that's saying we don't want any light rail. We're saying goodbye to that federal funds, the jobs that go with it, the economic opportunity, the chance for our young people to get to school, the chance for our older adults to be able to live Please. and have a great no. No. Folks from ARP. I will cancel this meeting if this continues. We had people represented, representing ARP yesterday who wanted to talk about what it would mean for people who have accessibility challenge, for older adults' ability to age in place. There are real important benefits to this project, and we need to have an open debate about those benefits. We also need to talk about what this means to our regional partners. There are other cities who work with us on the light rail system, and they deserve to have input into this process as well. This is a very complicated decision, and today's vote matters a big deal. Do we want to be a community that invests in transportation options? Do we want to have more urban options? Do we want to be more inclusive? This is about the future of Phoenix today. 
and, and council member, if I could, Murray. you pointed out something interesting. This is, even though this is happening in South Phoenix, this is part of a regional system and it is a regional project. And, and it's, it, as council member Waring said yesterday, it's not a unilateral action. There are many, many complex and different levels that would have to go through to even pause or put on uh, or, or unwind these relationships. And, and it, it is very complex because of the relationships that have been built up, once again, based on literally years of formal decisions by both voters and the city council and the regional bodies, both MAG and Valley Metro. And it's not just um, the state has made decisions. Just two weeks ago, the state allocated investments in particularly senior living, affordable housing. They made four significant commitments of senior housing projects along the light rail line. It, and there are just throughout the business community, nonprofit community, people who have been making investments, trying to improve the community, counting on this light rail. And we're saying something to them as well. It is, the implications of this vote are enormous. Councilman Moore. Thank you, the implications are enormous. She, uh, she Councilman Geiger is right. Um, I don't agree with everything she said, but I appreciate the way that she said it. I know she believes very passionately in what she said. Uh, I do believe, um, and I'll respectfully say it, she didn't deserve to be hooted down. I thought that was wrong. So I, I, she's, she's standing up and saying things in front of people that she would probably like their support. And uh, that's hard to do in these jobs. Nobody likes to hear people be disagreeable or whatever. So please just try to keep that in mind. Um, you could be booing me at the next meeting. It's just it's just the way it goes. We're not going to agree with each other all the time. I would say this uh, as passionately as she speaks in favor of light rail, I would speak as passionately against it. So I don't want to, in the interest of being transparent, I, I think I've said it before, if I can kill it, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I had told voters I was going to do for as long as I can remember running for office, at least in this position, for sure. So um, it's something I also feel strongly about. I don't think it's good for our community. Some of you in this audience, maybe more than half in this particular meeting, sounds like agree with me. You don't think it's good for your community, at least as currently constituted. I am arguing that uh, I appreciate uh, Mayor Smith, uh, Scott Smith, uh, you know, saying we're going to try to make it work the way you'd like. But to Councilman DeCicio's point, I, I have my doubts that it's going to work out to your satisfaction. I don't think that's going to happen. If you want an alternative, my proposal, I think, would be it. If it winds up killing the whole light rail projects going forward, okay, I'm not going to lie to you and say that I'd be devastated by that, to be blunt. So um, I'd rather keep the money that's being collected and, and spend it on something more productive. I will say this about light rail, for example. We're targeting what's there today. We've got two sports teams that may or may not be in their stadiums right down the street here that's got, I don't know how many millions or billions of infrastructure for light rail going right by them. So things change all the time. We are gonna look like idiots if, if those stadiums are empty and light rail's running by it. That doesn't, isn't gonna make a lot of sense but that's just the way it is. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna base my decisions on bad decisions that were made in the past. That's just the way it goes. But I just want you to think about that. Some people mentioned buses yesterday. Some people like good experiences, some people talk about bad experiences. But you can move the buses around. You can keep your four lanes with the buses. You could spend the two hundred and twenty million and that buys a lot of buses. The statistics I've seen, Maria, check me if I'm wrong, perhaps it's changed. A lot of your light rail ridership used to ride the bus. Go back and look at some articles. There are the Republic's written and, and put out some very good articles based on a lot of fact-based stuff. If you read that stuff, the idea that light rail is good for your community, I don't know, the undercurrent, you might you might wanna just do some more like heavy duty research and, and see if you think that's really true after the examination. So I understand about the federal money. I understood all the implications. I'm not trying to be deceitful in any way. I don't think it's good for our community. Some will agree, some won't. I just want to put that to the test and let voters decide. To Councilwoman Starks' um, comment, she's right. The rest of the city will get to vote on this. But I, th I thought I'd made clear. I want it clearly delineated in anything that comes back from staff. But the money uh, for this project would stay in South Phoenix, and I'm sure defining South Phoenix can also be delineated. Um, you know, it's possible staff could come back with other alternatives. I wouldn't support it. 
pro, um, anti-light rail. There was talk about 24th Street and so forth. Perhaps you could change the route. If somebody wants to bring something back, that's fine as well. If staff wants to work on that and see if that's even plausible, that's fine if that would help this community. But I would like an up or down vote uh, with the stipulations that I discussed, and I hope I've articulated the reasons why. Thank you. I, I would like to go to the cards. Uh, I know that when you fill out these cards, it was probably for a different purpose. Uh, so if you are uh, supporting the motion that is currently before us, which is putting it to a vote, uh, that's what you need to speak on. So if you could limit yes or no or whatever, because uh, I'm going to lose some people, and then we will vote on that measure. If it passes, that's it. If not, we will go back to the original motion that Councilman Nowakowski made and vote on that. So if you would come up, I hope that you can have uh, combined and just have one or two speakers. Uh, I know I have a card from Greta Rogers. And what I did yesterday is I tried to alternate based on the cards for and con. So. Um, Okay, uh, are they speaking for other people or? Okay, I have. This is for the. I, I believe these cards are first motion. First motion or second motion? Are there any cards for the second motion? The current motion on the floor is to refer this to the voters for Councilman Waring. It was seconded by Council DeCicio. That's on the floor right now. Well, well, we can't say anything until we've had comments from the cards unless you want to waive, waive the right to speak on this. I don't see anybody jumping up and say don't speak, so. I'm sorry, John, I can't hear you. Could you go to the microphone, please? Oh, okay. You could do the second motion. I think if you, you, the audience, you, the citizens of Phoenix, would raise your hand as to if you would want to speak to the first motion, then then you can get an idea of what's Number overwhelms the other. So if the first motion, a lot of you support, fine. If the second motion, majority of you support, fine. Then that one wins over the other. So for the I don't think so, no. We need to, to we have to take it in order. Oh, I understand, but you're telling us right now you have I two know, But two we don't motions. want to be here all night because I'm already losing. I understand, I, know, I appreciate it. It's good for the people. It's very confusing, I understand. Right now, what we have is the motion on the floor is to put it out to the voters. That is the second that motion. That overrides Councilman Nowakowski's motion that he had made earlier to send it back for a further study to create four lanes and to create, uh, I'm very supportive of that, I will tell you, because I expect them to come back with something that is not second class, it's first class. The last thing I want to see is happening in South Phoenix that you don't get as much as others and that yours isn't as nice and I am a firm believer you deserve it the best. So anyway, Greta, do you want to speak? Good to see you. Thank you, Mayor and members of council. Um, I'm going to speak to the subject I was going to speak to yesterday, but it went on too long and I had to go home. One of the things that you people have failed to do in this whole process, which is required by federal law, the NEPA Act, that's the National Environmental Protection Act that was passed in 58. And the Civil Rights Act, 
which was passed in 1964. That's 50 and 54 years ago, and there is no reason why anybody who is a leader in government isn't familiar with these required acts for many, many infrastructure projects and are absolutely required for receiving federal funds. You didn't do a NEPA study, an assessment is not a study. You didn't reach out to the community of South Phoenix in an overt, publicly announced manner at all. Both are violations, and if you proceed, as you've been discussing here today, which I think makes sense, you must follow both federal laws. And believe me, if you don't, Steve Brittle and I will file suit against you in federal court. We did it once before, several years ago, when a lousy company called Fetter Fisher Industries came here, set up shop mining in the river off 28th Street and Elwood, had no permits to do anything, and I discovered them. And they were not only mining and crushing rock, they were manufacturing asphalt. And the city was blind. So we'll take you to court again if you are grossly negligent. And you've been grossly negligent and importune to the citizens of the city of South Phoenix. And this may have put a plume in your hat, Ms. Gallegos, for running for office again and hopefully get to your ultimate goal, which I believe is to become a senator from the state of Arizona. God save right. us. Thank you. Uh, Michael Kelly. Michael Kelly. On the motion? On this motion. Well, oh, there you are. Mayor Williams and honorable Phoenix City Council members, I rise in opposition to this motion, uh, but thank you for the opportunity to voice my support for the South Phoenix light rail system. Now personally, I appear in this chamber as a proud South Phoenix resident for more than 40 years. Since 2000, I have been involved as a volunteer for every transit initiative in my beloved city of Phoenix and South Phoenix. I've attended dozens of city council meetings, hearings, and community meetings, culminating in serving on a committee to support the overwhelming passage of Proposition 104. South Phoenix, for too long, has been ignored. For too long, South Phoenix uh, cannot afford to be ignored again. Now, as you know, the voters approved the extension in 2000 and 2015. Seventy-five percent of those who live along the, the line voted in favor of 104, providing the local funding for the extension. Nearly 21% of South Phoenix households don't own a car. So they have to deal with food insecurity because they can't get to a, a market like Fry's. I won't disrespect you if you don't disrespect me. I'm talking fast. As I mentioned the facts, while 55% of the households only own one car, and not to mention senior citizens who will be utilizing uh, this rail line, you know, because they can't get to or don't have public transportation, 
and also the creation of jobs in South Phoenix. Existing bus routes in South Phoenix are struggling to keep up with demand as they're often at capacity experiencing significant delays. The South Phoenix, as was mentioned, the South Phoenix Central Extension Project is under strict federal transit administration timelines. Valley Metro and the City of Phoenix have no control over those timelines. The FTA deadlines, if they're not met, the project won't receive 50% of the FTA funds under the current grant. Reapplying for the FTA grant would force a two to three year project delay, resulting in 35 to $50 million in design pre-construction fees. I need you to wrap up, please. I will wrap up. I have significant differences with those who claim that there was not outreach there was significant outreach for this, and a number of people who are now present were missing in action when we dealt with the outreach because I was there and didn't see a number of the people there. Yesterday, you heard from somebody who had been paid to oppose this important railway, and unfortunately, he may not have been eligible to vote for Proposition 104, because of a felony conviction for lying to the FBI. So those are some of the folks who have come here in, in opposition of this railway. I submit to you and those in opposition that the time is now to support the light rail system in South Phoenix. Thank you. Thank you. I would, I would like to call to the motion. Okay, all those in, I do this by roll I would like call. to call to the motion or do I? for uh, item motion two, the, the substitute, substitute motion. motion. That's what's on the floor, and that's done by voice vote. Okay, she has called for the question, which means we have to uh, have a vote on whether to accept her motion. If so, that brings, uh, the item that we are discussing up for immediate vote. So it's voice, right? Mayor. And roll call. Ma Thank you, Mayor. Tell roll call. Motion two. This is the vote the substitute on whether, motion. whether we listen. Called. Yes. Is this the actual vote for the, on the substitute motion or whether we Called. hear the no, substitute motion? No, we are voting on whether <laughs> we vote on the substitute motion. She's calling for the question. DeCicio. No. Gallego. Yes. Nowakowski. We're voting on the call to the question, right? Correct. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Valenzuela. Waring. Yes. Mayor Williams. Yes. So now we have uh, Council or Vice Mayor Waring's motion on the floor to put it to the voters. Roll call. DeCicio. Yeah. Gallego. No. Nowakowski. No. Pastor. No. Stark. Valenzuela. No. Waring. Yes. Mayor Williams. No. So it's six to two. Now we are back to the original motion made by Councilman Nowakowski. And I have cards on that. Uh, James Neal. Mayor, council members, thanks for your time today. Um, I think it's clear from last night's testimony and even more passion, continued passion today that, um, you know, this, the light rail is currently designed does not have the full support of the community. Um, nobody, I don't think, Anybody ideally wants a reduction to two lanes, whether you're for light rail or against it. Um, it is possible to take the time to build a broad base support and you know, build a coalition that the majority of the community would support. 
Um, and that's what I encourage you guys to do. Um, that money, from my understanding, some of it that were at deadlines from conversations with some of the council members, it may be possible to, to shift over to either the Metro Center line or potentially to the West Valley line. I encourage you to explore those possibilities. Um, I want to bring up uh, a point that, it, you know, four lanes um, or two lanes will destroy all the businesses on Central Avenue. Four lanes may destroy some. I think the number 50 is a, is a high estimate, but even, at least if uh, some of those business owners did have to give up their business, they would be compensated for that and get something out of it as opposed to just being put out of business um, from lack of traffic and being left with nothing. Um, the desire of the community is four lanes. Um, South Phoenix you know, deserves four lanes. They shouldn't be the only um, community in Phoenix to to be stuck with two lanes. Nowhere else in Phoenix has that been uh, you know, approved and nowhere else would it be approved. Um, so I ask that you uh, consider the 90 day pause or if it is to move forward, add a stipulation that you know it can't move forward with the two lanes without a vote um, in the future. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Sylvia Berlita. Oh, and your name? My name is Sylvia Yurushi. Okay. Yes, thank you. Mayor Williams, council members, uh, thank you for having the meeting today. I am opposed to um, Councilman Nowakowski's um, chain motion. motion. Um, I live in District 6, and unlike my own city councilman, I am here in support of the South Central Phoenix Light Rail Extension Project, and urge the council to ensure the extension will continue with no pause or interruptions. I have worked in the South Central and South Phoenix communities since the late 1980s, when I was a volunteer at a community organization encouraging families to register their children in school and lay them by working to create affordable home ownership and rental housing in partnership with community organizations and the city of Phoenix. I have seen the impact that light rail has had and its potential as a community development tool, a tool that is bringing additional investment dollars to improve the lives of people with limited incomes but high aspirations. The Sustainable Communities Fund, with which I was involved, is a local financing fund that was put together by the Rasa Development Fund and the Phoenix List, and it supported the creation of hundreds of affordable housing units, healthcare clinics, and thousands of feet of commercial development along the rail. These investments, well in the hundreds of millions, have been done in all three cities, Phoenix, Tempe, and Mesa. This is the type of investment that the South Central and South Phoenix communities need to increase the opportunity for its residents. It is unthinkable that this city council will disregard the numerous community meetings which I have attended and ignore the voters who did their civic duty at the polls. The fifth largest city in the country deserves a 21st century transportation system. Please vote to keep the project going and against any delays. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <laughs> Celia Contreras. Um, good afternoon, uh, Mayor and Councilman, Councilwoman. Um, we come here for a second day for hear your resolution. Uh, we prove already then we can involve the community. Uh, we expend a lot of money. We don't receive any money for any brother, so we, so we, so we. I don't know who that means. I don't never hear about that. All the money that we expended is business owners. And uh, we prove it and we can do it. We can involve the community. Um, um, where I hear in the community forum is nobody wants the light rail, but some of those uh, can change their opinion if the light rail coming with the property way. But anyways, uh, the light rail is a failed project. They don't, 
uh, sustain by herself. Uh, they don't pay herself. We need to put in our tax money for pay his maintenance. And uh, we don't want the crime in our, in our community. We don't trust in the light and the Valley Metro people who fell already for make the studies. At this point, we are in the 11 hour because we uh, ask him for this action like uh, more than a year before, and they don't want to change his thoughts into we push at this point to come into you and investment a lot of money for coming. Um, we know then uh, uh, there are a lot of voters voting for the Proposition 104 mayor, but the voters, we proved it ayer, then the Proposition 104 is a lack of information. We don't know the Central Avenue converted in, in two-lane traffic. We know already Then the whole entire South Phoenix, they have an agreement in one point. You're not going to convert the Central Avenue in one lane traffic each side period, with the train or without the train. You're not gonna come and hurt a community. And um, it's, 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 we ask you for pass uh, this uh, um, process for 90 days and hear the community. And if it's not possible, the light rail coming on Central Avenue with the four lanes with no damage, any business and property owners, uh, the properties, you're not allowed to come to South Phoenix. You have to move for another way or you have to gun. We prefer to take the money and fix our streets, our community, than have a light rail and hurt our community. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, really quick, I just have a question. Go ahead. Yeah. Tomorrow we ask for an independent individual to facilitate this. Can we do it within 90 days? Uh, Mayor Councilman Nowakowski, yes. I think that, that uh, independent facilitation of that broad and very robust community discussion that you asked for in the motion could occur within that 90 day period. And it'll be not just one meeting, but several meetings, right? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. So in the motion, the way the motion, uh, we worked, Councilman Nowakowski and I worked back and forth with uh, the departments to anything in that motion is, it has been written for it to uh, go through the process. And I was very much adamant about a, having a facilitator uh, having uh, those deep and rich discuss discussions with the community regarding light rail. So I just want to be clear on that um, and how we were work together regarding this. So thank you. Okay. Johnny Hernandez. Good afternoon, Mayor, and distinguished members of the council. I'm urging you to continue with the vote for the continuance of the light rail, a vote to stop it today. You're voting against a single mother with her children right now who are taking the bus and is looking for a better opportunity. You're voting against students who are trying to better themselves, who are now seeking access to transportation. I, I was once one of those students, and I, had some help along the way. And that's all we're asking for is a continuance of that. Just give us a chance to succeed. That's all we're looking for. We've lived on the, we've been exiled from the community, the greater community of South Phoenix for many years. Bring us into the fold now. Let us have a chance. Help the single mothers with their children who wanna go to the grocery store and have an opportunity to get a job. Help students who didn't have access to graduate education, post-secondary schooling, help those children. This, I'm gonna benefit from this, but this isn't for me. This is for my grandchildren, my daughter. This is for the children of the, my community who wouldn't have access otherwise to an educational system or the resources to obtain a great education because of 
constraints that the bus have to take four buses to get to school, that's not realistic. And if that's all we're asking for is just that chance. And a vote today and stopping that is a vote against a single mother, single fathers. Thank you. Please. John Mendebles? No, John Mendel, no. I can't hear her. It's my right to make it. You don't say you take it two opinions in favor and two opinions against us, or you want more cars because I have a here a lot no, of people. I don't if you want to pass here more four more hours and go and sleep at one o'clock, we can fill it up the, 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 the green cards. But you told us it's two opinions in favor, two opinions against us, and right now you have a three against us. So it, tell me if you want to take a long I was time like take yesterday one more card. and we can fill it up a lot of cards right now. I'm going to take one more card, and then I'm going to call for the vote. Thank you, ma'am. John Mendables. Hey, just have respect right now. In this country, in this country, it depends on Please. respect, OK? Respect goes a long way. You get respect, you get respect. That's how it goes. Anyhow, dealing with this, like I said before, without the flim flam, there's an issue here of four lanes, there's an issue of two lanes. Four lanes do away with more businesses. Unless you have those businesses and you're gonna earn on it, you don't have much to say, do you? Because that's them and their families. That's not your decision, that's theirs. Anyhow, two lanes, that's an issue that deals with emergencies. It's going to shut down the emergency access on other issues. It's going to make secondary traffic not only on Central, but on other streets and avenues. So this has already been voted by the, by the public. We voted for it. Taxpayers voted for it. This is an issue to South Phoenix, only to South Phoenix, only because if you look at the light rail now, it has four lanes wherever it goes. That's where it's here. It's in Mesa, too. Right? Is the city or all the taxpayers going to um, cave to the needs of South uh, Phoenix? Perhaps they should, because if it's not been in the other parts of Phoenix or Mesa or wherever, and remember the two cities, Scottsdale and Glendale, that said no, then it should happen in South Phoenix. But if that's not going to happen, because if it's going to if it's going to definitely close down businesses with four lanes then perhaps you, you should discover for it to go underground where it affects nobody. Everything stays the same. Or it goes, or goes above the ground where it affects nobody and everything stays the same. No. Think outside the box because you can't have it both ways. All right? That's the way this world runs. This is a democracy. It's, it's not a communist issue where you demand and that's the way it goes. No, that's not the way it goes here. This veteran right here didn't fight for that or to be disrespected. This I will defend. Yes, sir. But anyhow, getting away oh, to that rhetoric, yes. getting away to that rhetoric, OK? I do think that Mr. Narakowski's motion should be supported, that there should be more input. There should be more study into this. And does 90 days kill you? It's not going to kill me. Does it kill the budget? Maybe a little bit, but you just decided to kill the budget. So it doesn't really affect that budget. Does it affect people that are insulary right now that are going to be affected? Let's just like, like Promise Arizona that's supposed to go out there and get your input and hear what you have to say? Perhaps, yeah, too. But if you shut it all down, who are you going to talk to? Who's going to be there to take your opinions if there's nobody at that desk? Be careful what you ask for, because when you get it, you might not like it. That's what I suggest. I suggest in my, in my humble recommendation that they support the Narokowski um, resolution, if that's what I understand, to have more time to study, to bring it back, that everything, yeah, the money be stopped. We shouldn't spend money on an issue that's not no, totally that's, out there, man. I don't understand if that's the motion or not, but further study is the motion. You're, I think it should be supported. I think you're half right. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I hope I am. Mayor? 
Yes, Mayor? Councilman. Uh, John, I yes, want to sir. thank you for your service to our country. Uh, you've done a lot for our country. The work that you do for the American Legion is amazing. And the individuals that you work to help. And thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank uh, you, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to support the motion, uh, Michael Nowakowski's motion. And I want the public to understand there are two individuals on the council right now that have done everything that they can to, to, to well, there's more than two, but these two individuals have tried their best because I've seen them work this. It's Michael Nowakowski and Laura Pastor. To those of you that are in the audience today, you may or may not always agree, but the bottom line is they've done everything that they can. And if you saw the questioning that Michael Nowakowski mm. did yesterday, Councilwoman Pastor yesterday, I mean, it was exemplary. It was outstanding. So I'm going to support this, even if there's a glimmer of hope that these individuals can be protected and saved. But I've got to tell them something else, too. You are about to get screwed, okay? Realistically, <laughs> that is what's going to happen to you. you got to say going what to you mean. Screwed. The bureaucrats and the politicians are going to stuff this down your throat because that is the path that they're on. And oh that is, until you take this into your own hands, run an initiative, take control, the bureaucrats want this, they are going to shove it down your throat. Period. They're going to do everything they can mm, to screw you over. Awesome. And, um, but I am going to support this because I'm hoping that even if there's a half of a 1% chance that they can be protected, I would support that because this is deplorable what's happening to those business owners. And everyone talks about, oh, we're going to be doing this and it's going to be great. What about the hair salon? What about the donut shop? All those places are going to go out of business because of this uh, monstrosity of a project. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I am going to ask council you, any council. further comments. If not, I'm going to ask for roll call. Mayor Williams? Yes. May I ask a question? I feel that it's only fair to have one more person represent our side here. What's your side? You feel? I am asking for you to please consider extending a 90-day uh, to reconsider the light rail to at least so that we, it gives mm. us time to come up with a valid plan. That's not the motion. Oh, wait, well, can I just talk? For no. a little bit because I feel no. like we were not. No, no, no. I did not fill out a, a card because I was told yesterday when I was here that only one person was going to be able to talk well, on each I, side. Well, I said two, and, and then today you asked you for said a, two. a special. I picked a card that said oppose because that was a side that I didn't feel was had representation. But we are now going to vote on Councilman Nowakowski's motion. That's what's on the floor for our decision. So would you do roll call, please? DeCicio. Yeah. Gallego. No. Nowakowski. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Stark. Yes. Valenzuela. I have one, a, a quick question before I vote. Okay. I want to ask uh, Scott Smith, I want to ask our city staff if this motion is, is actually doable. Does it set us back at all? What are, your, what are your thoughts? It makes things more problematic. Mm -hmm. I can't say that up front it is, uh, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it kills anything because we will move forward with the FTA process. But it does open it up uh, for, uh, you know, conversation. And uh, I think that if we have an honest discussion and we come up with some solutions, that there is a chance that we could uh, uh, we could adjust the design or plan within the FTA guidelines to make changes that the that the community would like, uh, but we are under very strict uh, uh, restraints as to what we can do because of the process where it is right now and because, frankly, of staying away from buildings. But we'll 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 do the best we can. Mayor. Given the alternative, uh, you know, we can live with this. We'll make it work. We'll make it work the best we can. If it comes back that it does put the project at risk, uh, and the FTA does have a say in how some of this proceeds, because we are at this stage in the game, we'll come back and let you know. We'll, Phoenix staff will understand that, because uh, we are not going to put the project at risk, uh, but we're also going to be, uh, uh, going to be sensitive uh, that people want and need to be heard, and that there are possible changes we can make to to, to, to satisfy their needs, but there are restrictions. 
Thank you. Ma Mayor, and I, I, I have saved my time for, in terms of speaking up, but if I can just say a few words here. I, I want, the community deserves to know where, where I stand on this, and, and I, I realize that half the room is not gonna like my position on it, but I also wanna just explain it for just a moment. I, I believe th this project has to happen. Uh, I, I believe it's, uh, now I wanna explain it. You know, I, my district, first of all, I'm a strong proponent of light rail, of infrastructure. I do believe that there is a very positive return on investment. If you follow the light rail track from Mesa to Tempe into downtown Phoenix, and now what you're starting to see uh, in, on 19th Avenue, which is my district. I realize that certain people talk about 19th Avenue and may never even drive 19th Avenue. Uh, that was a very, very difficult process, and it took a lot of leadership, and it took a lot of, of bringing people together. We have some great city staff that, that helped in that. Mayor Williams helped, uh, and uh, and that 3.2 mile stretch on 19th Avenue, it was it was controversial, which is the case every time you rip roads up and 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 that type of thing. Uh, at the end of the day, it's a community that embraces light rail. 19 North came out of light rail. We have a, a, a connected. Uh, seven different schools and several places of worship and hospitals and grocery stores and and so on Chris Town Mall is now going to be renovated because of light rail uh, and so and so those are those are the actual facts on 19th Avenue we've actually had tours with people who are interested in investing in the community and in the the economy uh, of 19th Avenue hey do not interrupt I want to be respectful to the mayor and the mayor's uh, protocol here, but I will say 19th Avenue got four lanes, and there are certain areas in 19th Avenue where it got five lanes, and I'm proud of that. We worked diligently. We worked every day. I, I'm telling. There were there were times where I got two haircuts a week, trying to support the local businesses on 19th Avenue, getting new tires for my vehicle on 19th Avenue, grocery shopping on 19th Avenue. At the time, I lived in far west Phoenix, but that was important to me. You know, either, every council member has a TV show. I would do a TV show at a local business on 19th Avenue, a local restaurant. Many of those restaurants, and not all of them are there, unfortunately. Many of them are there, and a lot of new ones are there. But, but it takes, it takes leadership and it takes a lot of effort to continue to move that forward. I will tell you that if I had my choice, we would have four lanes on Central. Uh, I spent part of my childhood in South, I still have a lot of family in South Phoenix. I believe that's where light rail should have started, frankly, in, uh, on, on Central. I give a tremendous amount of respect to one of the greatest leaders of our time as far as I'm concerned, and a mentor in Congressman Ed Pastor for making that happen. And if I had a choice, we would have four lanes. But as far as I'm concerned, this conversation is not about four lanes versus two lanes, because it did pass at the ballot box. People are being taxed as we speak, expecting light rail on Central and going out west. And the Northwest Light Rail Extension Phase Two, which goes to Metro Center, and so on. So, uh, if, you know, if, again, if I had my choice, we would have four lanes. But this is not a conversation of two lanes versus four lanes. I believe it's a conversation of whether we have light rail in in South Phoenix or not. With this current administration, this is our one opportunity, and this has to happen. And and so it's not ideal, but. Uh, but thank you for listening and give me a chance to explain my vote. The reason I ask this question to Scott, to Mr. Smith, uh, and our, our city staff is because I, with that understanding, I don't want to do anything that's going to undermine people who voted, who are being taxed, 
to bring light rail into South Phoenix. I don't want to derail that plan at all. Now, if you're telling me, and if staff is telling me that this does not derail the plan, it, it, the project continues and it moves into South Phoenix on Central, uh, but it allows the flexibility to continue to be, to allow people to be heard, then, then I understand that. With that understanding, I'll support it. If you're telling me that it's going to derail this plan, stop the plan, create a pause, which essentially then sets the plan back a year or two, then, then I can't support it respectfully. Mayor and Councilman Valenzuela, uh, my understanding of the motion is uh, that the, the federal submissions that we need to make by, by July to enter into the engineering phase will continue. Uh, however, we will also engage in this very, very extensive community outreach and community discussion and take a look at the, uh, the alternative design with four lanes and see what the possibilities are and have those discussions with the community, talk about the trade-offs um, and, and bring something back for additional discussion. So that's, that's the, the motion that, as I understand it, and um, does not take us out of the federal process or, or put the project at risk. I, I, will, um, I will add well, one thing to that, and that is that we're not 100% sure how the uh, Federal Transit Administration will react to this process. If there, is, if there is a roadblock or is a question as it relates to, for example, the environmental process, and, and it, it, it creates an, uh, a, a challenge that would impact that, we'll come back to this council immediately and let you know that there is a problem with that uh, and explain exactly what that is. Uh, but I don't anticipate it, but that could come up. I, I want to be and Would that require totally an honest. additional vote at that time? Uh, well, I don't believe it would because I think the way the motion is, it talks about the federally approved environmental footprint, and that's how I read it. If it doesn't require an additional vote and if this project continues yes. to move forward, but it, it, it gives people an opportunity to continue to weigh in and where we can be flexible on, on uh, four-vehicle or four-lane pass-through yes. traffic and intersections, that type of thing, we should absolutely be open to those types of discussions. And we will be. And we, great. And, and, and again, and, and so it, it doesn't postpone or prolong this project. It doesn't sound like there will be an additional vote later because that's, that's important to, to note as well. So there is, uh, there's not a, a, that can drive even uh, more questions out in the community. So with that understanding, then I will support the motion. My vote is yes. Waring. Thank you, I'd like to explain my vote. Um, I know my motion lost. I'm sad about that. <laughs> try. Uh, as Homer Simpson so memorably said, son, you try, you fail. The lesson, never try. Just kidding. Um, did what I could do. I wasn't surprised that the, the vote went the way it did. But actually, I, know, I don't know how many hours we spent talking about this. Well worth it, from my perspective, to have this discussion. You heard my passion saying I didn't think light rail. Uh, was good for our community, but I do appreciate uh, particularly the two who are running for other offices, Daniel Valenzuela and Kate Gallego. I appreciate them clearly articulating in a room full where half the people are going to be mad at them, as Daniel said. I, that takes a lot of courage. I applaud that they very clearly and, and concisely expressed their views, why they thought it was good. I, I may personally disagree with their points, but I was glad that we had a chance to discuss them. So thank you, Mayor, for putting this on the agenda and having this discussion. I think it's a good thing. Uh, to Councilman Nowakowski's motion, I, I would love to be supportive. It is an area that he at least partially represents. I think he shares it, I believe, as we discussed yesterday with Councilman Gallego. Um, and I would like to be supportive. I am gonna wind up voting no. Uh, part of it is, and I appreciate I that, feel that like they were offered up at that. What's that? <laughs> like crying. It's just surprised. it's the bitterness and ill will for you not supporting mine. That's really all it is. It's just pettiness. Um, but kidding aside, uh, you know Scott Smith did put in some caveats, and I appreciate you being very transparent with us. So I, I appreciate that. Um, it did sound to me like we could support Councilman Nokowski's uh, motion, and it passes. But there was a potential. It sounded like that maybe we couldn't do some of the things that were in there, bottom line, if the FTA said, you know, you can't really change it like that. At least that's the way I'm interpreting it. 
Uh, regardless, uh, to, to the staffer's points, um, stuff happens, and I am afraid this is not going to turn out. I think it's also Councilman DeCicio's point. I, I just, I think, you know, the bulk of you are going to wind up being unhappy. I mentioned the stadium situation earlier. It's just one example of businesses that are on light rail, right? But they're big, visible businesses. That's why I picked them as an example, and there's been a lot of publicity about their futures in downtown Phoenix. But once you invest hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, based on the premise that they're going to be there, now you have altered the whole trajectory of your community. And now you kind of got to beg them to stay, because if they don't, you really look dumb. You spend all this money for tracks that might go by empty lots. Same in your community. This Sal called it, I think, a monstrosity. Um, whatever word you want to use that implies big and dominating for good or, or bad, your community is going to change because of this project dramatically. You will be revolving around it. It will not be revolving around you. You will be adjusting to it. It will not be adjusting to you. It's too much money. It's too big. It's going to dominate the landscape. However you feel about that, you, you probably want to take that in consideration. Businesses will leave. Councilman Valenzuela mentioned that. You know, there are new restaurants, and that's great for the new restaurant owners, but you know, if you've been there 50 years and you feel like you get pushed out, that's, that's not a great look either. Um, so, so I understand somebody mentioned it yesterday. Uh, basically, they said, you know, there has to be some creative destruction is effectively what they said, and that so some people are going to have to leave so the community as a whole can prosper. Maybe it will. I wish you well. If the light rail goes through, I hope it works out, much as I'm against it. I have my doubts. But, but I wish you guys well. Obviously, I think you see how this is going to turn out. I, I thought a vote might be more appropriate, but I understand the arguments against it. Um, but, but bottom line, this, this is going to change your community. You were right to come to us and petition. Whatever happened in 2015 and whatever happened at these public meetings, whoever participated or didn't, I've been doing this a while, so I recognize not everybody makes it to every public meeting, and sometimes people find out about this stuff after the fact, and we could complain about that or we could try to adjust. Uh, so that was what I was endeavoring to do in this conversation and also get my own viewpoints out there, and I appreciate your patience with me. Uh, with that, respectfully to Councilman Nowakowski, uh, uh, yes. I am going to vote no on oh, this issue. I thought it was yes. Mayor no, Williams? I'm, I'm voting no. <laughs> Mayor Williams. I, I am more optimistic than the vice mayor is. Everybody's more optimistic. I know. You're, you're Mr. Negative. Uh, I really think that when this is said and done, I mean, there will be pains going through it, but I think it's going to benefit this community. And it's not just for the people today. It's for your kids and your grandkids. And young people today are much different than our world that we lived in. They want fast transportation. They don't necessarily like cars. Uh, they want an easy way to get there, and this is an affordable way for them to do it. The light rail experience shows that it grows more all the time. We move tens of thousands of people every day, like 40 or 50,000 people right, right now today on a line that's not that large. It's going to give them an opportunity to, to be employed in downtown where we continue to look for new good employees. There's a shortage. They are looking for uh, people with skills and most all the young people have the skills. They're into electronics. They know coding. They're into computers. They know the high tech world. And we are creating that in downtown Phoenix. And this is gonna be an easy way for them to get to work to enjoy what is downtown but will really benefit the community. So my vote is yes. Six two. Uh, I, Councilwoman, did you have a motion? Mayor, I have a motion uh, to move uh, move to reconsider item sixty five, uh, adoption of the twenty eighteen annual operating funds budget at the June twenty seventh formal formal meeting. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do I need roll call? Voice count. I'm sorry, Mayor, members of Council. Under our Council rules, the motion can be made today and seconded, but it can actually not be oh, voted on for 24 hours. That's, so it'll okay. have to be at the next meeting. We'll vote on the motion on the 27th? Yes. Okay. Well, will we be able to vote on the motion on the 27th and yes. then vote on the budget on the 27th? Yes. yes. Great. The reconsideration. Right. For reconsideration. Okay. Does that mean two people from the 
Okay, that concludes. Uh, we are down to uh, citizens' comments. Paris Wallace. Harris Wallace. I'm, I probably can't. This is citizens' comments. Okay, Kate, is it Tutanya? Kate Tutanya. Kate Tutanya. Oh, sure. Pasquale. What? He was sitting. There he is. Pasquale. Come on down. Uh, Ms. Mayor's Councils, my name is Pasquale Abad. I come here today um, concerning uh, uh, the past at uh, 2017, uh, in April uh, 5th, 19, uh, 2017. The uh, city council is granting uh, Ricardo Soleil at uh, the uh, rezoning the property on uh, 1529 East of Valletta Street is at um, uh, to um, rezone from at, um, a, a C, uh, C1 to P1 is at um, uh, Outside the um, uh, the uh, uh, part of the street parking and that lot there, and uh, they was granted uh, in April's uh, 50. On uh, um, uh, May 10, 2017, the city council they had a, a another meeting concern that. And that's uh, the city council uh, told uh, the uh, Ricardo Salea, uh, the owner of uh, the property on uh, 1529 East Valletta Street, uh, for rezoning. Uh, then they rezoned uh, the uh, property, and then the city council stated that what the uh, uh, Ricardo Salea should comply with. Um, work on that because as uh, Ricardo Salea at the very beginning that uh, he bought a property on 1529 East of Aletta Street to end uh, he started uh, demolishing the house and as uh, paved the uh, uh, the lot without a, uh, a per city of Phoenix permit um, then I uh, reported to the uh, city of Phoenix and apparently the city of Phoenix uh, they got on top with Ricardo Salayas. So therefore now uh, we have a problem here that uh, uh, the uh, Ricardo Salaya don't comply with the uh, city of Phoenix uh, um, uh, zoning because it's, uh, uh, he did things in his way and still continue doing his way 
the lot is at 1529 Villa Street. It was to keep the cars parked in the street because there there is a access and the property which is it's in the wrong place. I oppose that. Okay, I'm, I'm going to I have to stop you now. Your time's up, but I will submit this to the city manager and he can send it to the proper staff to come out and do an investigation. Well, so the, I got a few more things. If I know, I. but your time's up. Well, uh, but is it included in your letter? I never got it in the major things in the because as uh, Ricardo Soleil at uh, a rezone in the property of 1529 East of Valletta Street as commercial property. I understand. And now the uh, the uh, cannot uh, rezoning in there without an application from the uh, uh, You're correct. the applicant. So, so it, uh, we will have staff investigate it. But thank you for bringing it to our attention. All right. Thank you very much. And have a nice uh, evening. All if you of would you. Uh, right meet here. with Alan Stevenson, he can assist right here. He's right coming here. See, to you. He's waving at you. Go, if you would go talk to him. Pasquale. Kate to Tanya. Are you here? No? Paris Wallace? All right, that's all the cards I have. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs>